heck? Of course, what it wouldn't be weird if it wasn't Twitch or it wasn't streaming, right? It's always something weird, isn't it? Always something weird. It is. Now I, just, I can see you. Yeah, there I mean, just it. yeah. I said getting you on. It's like always. Oh, Right, we are going to be going here. It's going to be—I hope it's going to be a good discussion. I think it will be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Back in two thousand and one, when we first began working with Gary, Gygax, we had a nice day today. He pitched this wonderful series of books to us. Yeah, he called them the Gygaxian fantasy worlds, and what he envisioned was this encyclopedic, encyclopedic set of books for role players, writers, game designers, the whole, the whole lot of us that we could use in making our games, creating our adventures, writing stuff for publishable content, whatever it may be. And there was really no end to what he envisioned this series to be. We eventually published The Canting Crew, The World Builder, Living Fantasy, seven Whoops. volumes in total. We had another That's three funny. that were ready to go to print. 
another three or four after that that we were working on. So this too bad I should have waited and watched the stream so I could hear it. <laughs> you finally hear that? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, d I didn't online. because I got into Zoom, but I was like, if you don't let me into Zoom, I can be on Twitch and let actually hear what he's uh, uh, saying. Yeah. Well, another another thing would be uh, you could um, maybe even more than that. Uh, once we kind of catch catch, uh, the, catch one of the vids, the just turn on the vid and and just see what it. Oh yeah, that's Welcome true. The, yeah, what, what it's all about. It's okay. I'll, I'll yeah, ask him uh, next time. Yeah. He's us, just uh, talking. He's talking mm -hmm. about. He's talking about all the stuff that you know. Whatever you need to do, all the kickstarters and stuff. Yeah. For us and the memory of Gary Gygax, we very much appreciate it. Troll Lord Games, join the fray. Else here, so. Very cool. Just checking some things here, as always. Another world. Oh, thanks, another world. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate it. Uh, hit the wrong button. There we go. Caught it just in time. Ha ha! Caught it just in time. Thanks. Yep. Happy Mother's Day. My uh, wife had a nice day. She's relaxing Good. now. Yep. William Henry Dwarks coming on tonight, so Vianna, Will, Will and me. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me strut that up too, because we're going to be giving away some of Will's books tonight. Do it now while I remember. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. Another world. Uh, what's your? Uh, and I apologize if I should know this. What's your, what's your go-to uh, system in D and I know a lot of people are you know all over, which is fine. Uh, but I'm just curious. Um, but I may should have known that. You got. I am. So I'm still in this intermittent fasting. So my brain is not working at 100. percent So uh, stay here. Yeah, I will, Lando. That's cool. I'm going to have Ron on. Uh, I'm going to have Ron Meissner on uh, in the near future. Probably when I get back from vacation in June. What's up, Will? Can't hear you. No. No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. You were introduced to second for the Equip 5 First Love, fifth now. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to have some fifth edition content tonight, trust me. We'll stick over on it. That's if Will can figure out how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I understand. That's 100%. Nothing wrong at all with that. Uh oh. Oh, there goes the little headset for Will. It's off. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. It's gonna switch it up. What's up, KJ? It's Chris. And we got next seven. Tonight, next one should be drawing for Will giveaways. Two. Yeah. I mean, yep, we can hear yes. you. Yes! works with it's it, that's funny that's funny anyway that's a matter so hi everybody hey 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 hello let's go live so uh i need to give you your character for two weeks right and that, that game's a new hey you don't have to get up super early yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. that's always a bonus yeah i like that i have to and, get up even earlier yeah. mm -hmm. oh uh, well uh, uh next week next week is really uh, early but the, uh for uh yeah. rob coots interview but like the yep. week after that um Oh, you have a bonus is jamming for Will, oh, myself. Gotcha. Yeah, Ooh. Will, myself, and, yep. uh, and Darling, and Miriam. And, yep. and, and I've, I've seen a couple of these videos. My son was into them. 
for a while. So I I sort of know what to expect. Okay. Is it? Is it? Um, it, 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 it cards. We need our own deck of cards. What's up, Big Mac? I do have one. Good. So, you're, you're good, too. Good to see you. Oh, Hello, right David. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I got a whole bunch of second edition supplements here, right now, uh, Another World, because, uh, you know, we have Ed on so much. I love all this stuff. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about a lot of things tonight. This is going to be a... What's up, Jeremy? There's going to be another one where we bounce all over the place, because that's just what I do for the most part, right? Bounce, 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 bounce. I, I think when you get Anna and I in the same room, that happens to. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it it happy, uh, so yeah. It can happen a lot, a lot. And uh, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Not so, at all. Yeah. So it's good to see you both. Um, you as well. Yeah. It's going to be a. Thank you for that uh, gift sub there. I'm just catching up. So, um, all right. First things first. I'll say this. Maybe I'll say it twice. Um, mm -hmm. I hit a milestone. I posted it. I don't know if anyone saw it. But well, I saw something. You yep. saw mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And I saw something. Mm. After almost six, it's it's like six years, almost, almost a six-year anniversary. Uh, here it is. Um, we reached one quarter million hours watched on the channel. Wow. Yes. So we hit that's, that. We hit that over the weekend. Yeah, man. So it was exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um Thank you all for the support. Uh, you know, kind of the big deal number four. I'll never is ten million hours. That that ain't happening any time in the near future. So, but just note that uh, it was cool to get and thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Quarter I thought at least hours. one million hours would be something to celebrate. It would be, but it took me almost six to get a quarter million. Yeah, but then another three or right? four years, and it will yeah. be done. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see. I mean, we're I'm yep. all, so this, that's another funny story. Is that um. You know, it took me forever to get a, to a thousand adventures. It took me what mm -hmm. forty-four years. We're already up to one thousand forty-five yep. um, already. So it's like it's going quicker because I'm doing a lot more. Um, yeah, doing a lot I mean, more you're running four events. streams a week. Then, then yeah. come on, that that needs to count for a lot. Five this week, and we'll talk about yep. that. Five, two and two on Saturday, and uh, I also got word that it looks like uh, well, we'll have Ed back on Saturday night in the game playing. Well, and we'll talk about Ed's character too, because man, what a great character that is! But we'll have um, probably have Ed on for a Gavin on the twenty sixth. So there we go. Thanks, thank you. How are the hours YouTube going? Oh wait, so oh yeah. Uh, well, here's the thing: I haven't oh. run any shorts in the last couple of days. I've been what? trying to do a short every other because my machine downstairs is zonked out. <laughs> so and that's where I'm doing them all from. So I haven't done any shorts lately. But yeah, the the, the shorts like quadrupled my viewership uh, hits there, Max. So it's going. Did well. it really? Oh yeah! Wow! That's I have a couple amazing. that were uh, uh, a bunch that were getting me five six hundred hits within twenty four hours. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So. I I I. I... I just don't understand it. <laughs> I don't get it either. I'm going to go don't... out on my lawn here in a minute. Just yell at people for no reason. Yeah, another <laughs> correct. It's, it's called short attention span theater, and, and and on YouTube they can only be uh, yeah. 59 minutes point nine nine seconds or less. I got to shove that all in, so it usually takes me like 20 takes because I don't like I editing. I'll edit the end and, and chop off something off the end, and then I can put it on Instagram, which is 90 seconds. So if it goes mm -hmm. over, I can keep it on the extra on Instagram. So yeah, people's right. attention is not. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> crazy. But speaking yeah. of, okay, what were you gonna say? Something? I was just gonna say that's a trained thing, with, with uh, modern technology and the different platforms that we are on. That it's 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 become ingrained. Because mm -hmm. it didn't used to be. Yeah. I remember waiting for hours in the doctor's office once, you know, and it was mm -hmm. like, you know, and that was a virtue. Uh, uh, when you when you uh, uh, showed patience, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're right. It was a virtue back in the day. You're dead on on that. Now I have a, I won't talk about it in detail. I have a something with a medical on Wednesday. Hopefully, I don't have to wait hours for it because that would be bad. So I've watched a good portion of the first two years, not the actual play streams. Yeah, you know what? The actual play streams. Let's let's be honest, Astoris, are boring as hell. Especially with my, <laughs> uh, ex except I didn't wasn't doing special events back then. And my guys are boring. Let's be honest, okay? They are. We're just sitting around playing the game. So don't worry. You're not missing anything. 
you know what you want to watch? You want to watch the fundraiser games. You want to watch early on, and then the special event games, which, which I have them in their own fo folder. I have them in the Altamir All Star Adventure ones. That's the ones you want to watch. They're in their own sub. The ones of my guys are some Thursday night. I don't even put them in a subfolder. So you cannot wait for the <laughs> red wedding, D darling. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? <laughs> Rosie, well, at least your love's going to be there. Talowick's going to be there. I am so, I have been planning. I have been planning so much for this. I can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm hopeful, though. TPKs take a lot of planning. Uh, you have, yeah. right, I'll, I'll say this, darling. You all have to give me creative, a little bit of creative leeway and license on this one. To, um, so, uh, I, but I, I promise not to ruin the ceremony itself. I won't touch that. So, <laughs> but that's that's next Saturday. Uh, Marriage. I'm not. I'm <laughs> going to do worse than uh, uh, TPK the Slav Squad Squad. <laughs> but Ooh. you know what? It's not. It's not my fault. <laughs> that's uh, true. It's they, not. It's not. They my fault. they sowed these seeds long ago. Yes, in right? particular the one who's who's doing the ceremony. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's going to be fun. We'll have a good time. That's all I'll say. It's going to be a really good time. And that crossover with, with Ed is always hysterical. And we got Tony in too, which is great. Yep. So um, yeah, I got a couple people on. I got like, uh, I got Josh and then I got Anna on super standby. So, but we got plenty of people. Seven's more than enough in that game. Um, yeah. So boom. All right. Tonight, Wizards. Uh, and I, I I didn't know what to call the topic, so I just rambled on, as you can tell in the topic, because it's gonna, we're going to yeah. go like a thousand different directions with this one, right? Well, there's spellcasters of all kinds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I want to, I, 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 and I know you'll go a different direction than me, and we'll make it a little different direction. But I want to focus mm -hmm. on, um, like when I I pick a spellcaster, I might pick one from my campaign and talk about how they how they developed and and, and how that went on, or someone who like or the, another like a circle of eight member or someone who's named and like wow there's a little bit different quirk about them and i think will we we what we want to you know we got your reference here let me uh, go up to this and this is going to be awesome because you just got you got all these by uh vote right a whole how many of them did you do wizards which w wizards yeah there's one for each school so there's eight, eight? Oh, that's great there's eight of them yeah that's actually so i i i need to say this now because it's like i give away most people tend to feel like there's no real big reason to subscribe because you can join for free onto my Patreon and you get so much good stuff, right? Here's an example. So what happened was is that I released, okay, what makes wizards? They're spells. So essentially what it was is you had eight different sets of spells that were named after the um, wizards from, uh, the pre-gen characters from out of the back of the adventures in Greyhawk, right? Yeah, so uh, and most Turned of them into Archmage. started off here in Greyhawk. Yeah, turned them into Archmaids and then uh, made spells, and I themed them after their school of wizardry, right? So there you go. Everybody got that, so forth and so on. That's a good thing. Well, I just collected them, right? That's mm -hmm. what you were showing right there. I collected them. I stripped out the IP, put it all into one PDF, and if you're a paid subscriber, guess who got that for free? You got the free PDF. This so guy. That. Yep. So, and then now that's on um, drive through. You can buy the PDF, and uh, hopefully, I think I'm going to. Oh, cool! The original, it's going into print. The original uh, submission uh, was declined. So watch here, so I can go due here. to I can due go. to covers. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I had to resubmit and re reformat it and resubmit it. So I. Basically, I have to wait for that to get approved. Then they send me a proof. I approve the proof, and then as soon as I as soon as I receive it, and if everything's okay, I can make it live that day. So there is a print version of this coming up. That's so, awesome. That's great. Yeah. And it's 120 different spells. It's actually, if you want to get technical, it's 240 because each spell has a fifth edition and OSR. an OSR yeah, cool. component to it. That's yeah. fantastic. Speaking of that, tonight's giveaway. Winner will get their choice of two of Will's publications. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's what winner will get tonight. Yeah, Sam, if you just win that, I can just print, I can just send one thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, um, look, <laughs> as people that I, um, I think Alyssa's is inactive now, if I recall. But I have, I have Anna 
Carlos, Jeremy Gamescape 3D, and Will, right? So, you know, they're the ones I have the memberships to. So, yep. And thank you. Of course. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Of course. This would be a, um, drawing. A, yeah, of course. Uh, it went in Mac. Yeah, of course. Uh, Will's stuff is great. So, indeed. What did I show for the drawing? Two of, you get your choice of two of five of Will's publications. Raven's Rook is one, right? Uh, Zhang the Horrific. Right, uh, Echoes of a Dark Past, The Mermaid's Blessing, and The Dragon's Horde. You get your choice of two of those. And I'll throw in a PDF of the Tome of the Council of Eight. Wow, you know, there you see go. See what I did there? Changed it from there you go. circle throw to council. Look. <laughs> well, at least you didn't call it, you could call it the Citadel. You probably could have even got away with that because those probably. dummies there wouldn't have known what that was. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so... But other than that, fun times here today. All right, so where do I start? I start here. Did I just knock my – no, phew, I thought I knocked out my cord. I only do that like seven times a stream. What do you do to make a wizard unique, right? So this is where – in this player – the player's handbook below I think was on the right track. A little 50% on the right track back when second edition came out. So you look at, there was no difference between Rari, Morning Kane, and Tensor. No, nah, nothing, right? Zero. They all oh, they have the same spell list. They're all the same. Okay, but just the same thing with clerics. Clerics were all the same um, classes, uh, basically in all the same spells, and they all turned undead. And then specialty priests came out. So I thought that they were on the right track, especially with cleric, cleric flavor. And I liked what they did, except I didn't like. I just didn't like the invoker and the and the you know all the other things, all the sphere based. It was cool, but I thought that it lost. Um, it missed out one key thing, and that was um, it was nebulous. I like substance, so I'm thinking to myself, and we did this. We talked about this with Alan when he was on. We made a necromancer. I don't like both made necromancer classes. So, Gary Con live. Look at that. Welcome, Gardner. Hope Welcome you had a great. Everybody. Hope we had a great game. We just started. I got uh, William Henry Dvorak, Anna Meyer, and myself, and we're talking up uh, wizards, uh, personalities, and classes, and uh, abilities of Greyhawk wizards. So we're just getting started here. Where the hell are your shoutouts, man? Holy jeez, I got like 7,000 pages of shout-outs. There we go. One, two, got them. So please, feel free. Feel free to stick around. We got, uh, you got two giveaways from William Henry Dvorak. Three, actually. You got a PDF, and you also get your choice of two of his five uh, publications I have here, all different. So exclamation point drawing, you just got to be around. Thank you so very much. Um, so I like creating classes. I like back creating classes. And I saw... Like the Invoker class, and what, what's what's another big one? The Abjurist and all. Mm, okay. But when I saw that they took an Invoker and they went one step further in this book. Haven't you made a class for each uh, school? Uh-uh. No. no. Well, no one wants to play Diviner, maybe. Or well, that's it. Well, Diviner would be an awesome class. Yeah. I've got a bunch. Of, I one of the guys. Uh, I spills all the spells I did. It's all the divination spells, and it's basically he's mm -hmm. a tricks. He's a trickster, mm -hmm. so he runs long cons and stuff like that. And so it's like he uses divination to kind of figure out what to do or how best to con somebody and so forth. And that, doesn't really have a whole lot of combat aspect yeah. to it, but it's got a lot of role playing flavor mm -hmm. to it. But you didn't make it a second edition. You took a spell list. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that one was easy because in fifth yeah. edition, they you can choose, you choose one that you're specialized in. You have access to all of them, right? But right. You can choose one. It's like that's my specialty, and you can. So it was easy to build off of that. Is basically mm -hmm. what it was. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with someone being a diviner at all. I mean, you can do that off of off, building it off of the spell list that exists. But I want, I want crunch and flavor. And then when this. This book came out, and this is the softback version. I didn't bring the hardback one up. The Tome of Magic, I was hooked. I think this is such a great book in second edition because it has two classes in here. Uh, it has Wild Mages, and it has Elementalists, and then I was hooked. 
I was like, beautiful. Flavor, finally, flavor. And we, we can advance on that. Um, I like Elementalists a lot. I love Elementalists. I love Necromancers. We all saw, if you watched yesterday, which I know you did, Will, I had a, a bad what did I have at the end? Oh, I saw all the undead yetis in that different stuff. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. yes. I, I, who is, now I turned in just as they were killing the big bat. Yeah, and she was. What was, uh, what was her name? What was she? Ha- all I got was ha- her name. Haragurtha. Who, yeah. and she was a frost giantess necromancer. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Now she had a living, she had a living consort named Lars, but then she had a uh, frost giant king she had animated, and all the, and she had two undead beholders, which had only yes. some of their eye stalks working. So that was fun. That was a fun yeah, time. I saw some of that yeah. that part of the comment. So I, I I love necromancers. Uh, and we talked, like I said, we talked about them a couple weeks ago when when, uh, when uh, Alan was on after Anthony Huso in the second hour. We really went into them in depth, but. Um, it's not to say that my way is right or wrong, and that's what I want to stress here. Get, like, do what works for your game. That's what this whole discussion's about. So, um, Anna, and I know you don't do class-based stuff anymore, but no, nope, what, it's... what do you do for, like, a spellcaster that, like... Do you, do they have to pay for spheres? Like, tell us a little. Well, bit. yeah, I, I keep the the classes. I've added one class called clemency. This was something that was discussed mm-hmm. both in third edition and fifth for fifth edition, and I think even for fourth edition, there was a talk about adding clemency. That's the healing spells. That that's the that's the the opposing class to necromancy. So so it's it's clemency is the the they're the opposed different the, the opposite one so to speak. And it's in in my view first of all magic comes in three general shapes so to speak. You can you can have the um, they, you can have the conduits where you get it from. You can have uh, arcane magic, meaning you figure it out. You know how to manipulate the world. So you use your talents or you, your your seat of your pants. So you either uh, an intelligence-based caster like wizards and, and so on, or you can use your charisma and fly by the seat of your pants and, and, and use your, your, your uh, simply talent for it and use charisma and those are the 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 equivalent of the wizard and the sorcerer so to speak and then you have the divine magic meaning someone else gives you the magic so so you suck up to a demon lord or 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 (laughs) or or some god you're a cleric or, or 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 something that that's divine magic and and then then you have and divine magic in some ways is the most powerful because any spell in the the in my whole system can be divine Almost, I think there's a couple of uh, exceptions, but almost everyone can, can be because gods can know all the magic, and that means that they can also give it to you. But that is also way more limiting because it's only what whoever you 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 get your magic from what they are willing to give you, so to speak, and 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 teach you. So so that's the, and the third form is primal magic. I've taken this from fourth druids. edition. I like it. Yeah, it's it's nature magic mm-hmm. that is based on nature. And my druids are a combination of divine and primal. So if you want to be a druid or get a job of a druid, you have to first learn nature and and, and get primal magic. And then you have to go in and start worshiping the flan god and, and stuff like that. So you you are a, a combination of a primal and, and a divine caster with some other stuff too, in order to, to, you have to basically qualify for the job of a druid. And and if you have that, then 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 you can become a druid, so to speak. Okay. So, but any yeah, but primal magic is the least powerful, but it's the easiest to learn, so to speak. Mm. But it's the least powerful one. Okay. Divine is in some ways the most powerful, but arcane has a lot of the flash and the bang, so to speak. So they have, but divine depends on the god and and whoever you stuff and then you have the the schools you can be uh, you can specialize it but you also have the magic strains meaning what type of power do you wield like shadow magic and and stuff like that so 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 i call them strains meaning you have celestial magic fey magic shadow magic 
radiant magic. So that's uh, what I want to ask. So you have mm -hmm. different spheres yourself that you've created. Yeah, yeah. I, I call them strains because that's the okay. type of, of energy you, you're wielding with your spells. The classes is more kind of the tradition you're casting them in, so to speak, meaning my I focus on this type of, of, of spells. And, and, and what, it's like you can go to school to become an enchanter or something like that. So so the spells is more like a tradition and, and it kind of and there might be other cultures who don't use that and they'd simply say, well, you just learn shadow magic or something. So so you can learn the spells individual. And there's substrains like under under necrotic, you can have blood magic and, and stuff like that. So you can yeah. kind of narrow focus and become specialized and say, I want to be a, a blood magic wielder, so to speak. Well, and, what, and, what, uh, yeah. like, um, what's the game that had blood magic in it? Uh, yeah. it was super popular like five years ago. Mm -hmm. I haven't come out with a sequel yet. I loved it. Oh my yeah. gosh. So, so uh, it's simply, I, I, I just put in there. So, video so game? you can, yeah. 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 And then I have something that I call magic font. That's the, the type of, of magic recording you can do, like regular magic yeah, users. Then, yeah. then, then you can put down like uh -huh. scripting. You can you can make uh, put things in your spell book and you can make uh, scrolls and stuff. But you can you can have like uh, you can have runes. You can learn magic runes instead of making scrolls, or you can tie little knots that are magical. There are many different versions. Magic. So yep. you can yeah, so you can sure. kind of you yep. can choose the magic font. Font, how, meaning how do you or you can just be a, I can learn a few spells and just cast them in it but if you want to write them down you have to learn one master one technique or many in order to store them there you can store them on on scribblings on the stone wall for instance that's like rune magic or or, or you can be wood carving whatever something meaning there are many different versions so so I have tattoo magic is another one you can you can store spells as tattoos and 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 that's another way of, of learning so so their magic comes with there's so many different facets to it that you can learn so you can you can be a, a tattoo blood magic face specialist or something if you See, want that's to that's awesome yeah that's yeah so, awesome. so there's a lot of a lot of different things and you can also learn just one spell innate so to speak or i just want to learn ritual magic that's a lot easier and and just be or i can just learn one spell to cast light spell innate but if you want to be a full-blown wizard and learn all there is to arcane spells that means that you have to forego almost everything else in order to do so 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 you can be either narrow down and learn a little bit or you can go whole hog and be a, a specialist in in the whole field so of magic once yeah. again that's your, your sound your your game does sound like a hybrid of pathfinder 2 and 5th edition correct? yes yeah yeah okay. in that way yes yeah cool. and 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 also the the magic is yes. also much more tied into my cosmology so so the spells they they work on a different if they use fave energies then they work in certain areas and might not work in other areas and be enhanced or diminished and stuff like that so so i try to tie magic into how the world actually works so it's not just like make game mechanics it needs to have some dnd physics built into even though That's... there are no dnd physics in greyhawk Oh yes, yeah. it is. In my Greyhawk, <laughs> there is DD physics. Okay. Yeah. Like teleport would... might not work everywhere. And stuff like that. So yeah. That's all right. I'm just I'm just busted. Oh so, yeah. It, so, it's it's yeah. <laughs> so Troy asked about the rifts and ley lines, and then I was like, I, I, I if I bothered with that, my man, with with two thousand characters, my my guys would go nuts. It was yeah. actually in rifts, uh, but like um, the myth the myth series. Um, has uh, power ley lines in it. I know mm -hmm. from Robert Ashman books. Uh, will yep. you use any of that stuff? Uh, Troy's asking. Rifts, ley, uh, ley lines. Um, yeah, I have in the past. I don't make it an intricate part of it. Um, yeah. But it's like if if, if I have a storyline that I like, generally Good ley time. lines and stuff like that will come into play with a location that's connected to the storyline, a.k.a. the dungeon yeah. or mm -hmm. some yeah. something like that. I might throw a ley line onto that. Uh, aside from that, I don't just because of the simple fact I don't want to keep track of all those ley lines. Oh, well, so, <laughs> it's, so, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like, and I don't want them going, hey, there was a ley line over here. And I'm like, oh, it's dead now. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sam, yeah, I, oh, sorry. But... Yes, no, Sam's right. They are mentioned lightly. I'm talking about early, early D and D. They're not around. The second edition, the Richard and Star cans. Mm -hmm. I have a spot outside Harby in 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 the eyebrows that actually is uh, we consider it a ley line where you can actually recharge 
magical items that's secret. Like it's yeah. a power site. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be I a little, yeah. So there's I prefer like instead that. of in, instead of the, the traditional ley line sort of thing, I prefer like focal points. And focal mm -hmm. points are generally where the 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 magic concentrator, the crossover between the realm. See, I I do everything in the old school kind of way of everything's got its own realm. So like there's the realm of magic. That's where all the magic comes from. It's from oh, the magic realm. Okay. Right. Yeah. So and it's just it's the bleed through or your draw through on it. Just like with Something. the Divine magic. Where's divine magic come through? It's given to you from what? A god. Somebody's given mm -hmm. that to you. You're drawing it from there. Right. Um, yeah. So I would do I, I do that a lot more than I would ever ever have done a ley line sort of thing. Yeah. And just say that this area or this particular uh, focal point, you know, just like in the old days where they used to say, you know, the crossroads. The crossroads was a very high, that would be a high magical place, you know, yeah. because because uh, it, mm -hmm. it's for whatever reason, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the crossing of, of peoples or whatever, it, it, it makes it a focal point for magic, you know? Okay. So something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. And it, in Cobalt Press Midgard setting, the, the ley lines are a big thing and, and mm -hmm. they're like magic highways and they have a lot of different functions and stuff like that. So I, I stayed away from those type of, of ley lines, but I have more like different magic strains, meaning if you're in the sus forest, then, then dark fey is strong. If you cast spells that use yeah. that type of, 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 of energy of that that type of strain that I call it, then then those spells will be enhanced. And if you yeah. want to to cast the spell of something else, they might be diminished. And and there's like a, a necrotic is one strain. If you go into an Iusian temple, a Nerul temple, those mm -hmm. spells will be way more powerful. And if you go to to a, and and the the ones that use radiant, for instance, that is like celestial power, they will be diminished in an evil temple and might be. If you go to Pillar Temple, and those spells will be way more powerful. So, so I have it more like where they're tainted, and and you have astral, celestial, concordant, elemental, mm -hmm. and ethereal, and fey, fiendish, necrotic, radiant, shadow, and temporal. Those are the 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 major strains, so to speak. And then there are sub strains under them. If you want to go, yeah, you can go deep into this. See, if you that's want to. that's more yeah. along the lines of how I like to do it. I like yeah. to have it be centralized yeah. and and so forth. Yeah. And one of the reasons too, I probably never got into that is that generally from campaign to campaign, unlike with Jay, I don't keep it usually connected. Each new campaign is it's a whole new mm -hmm. box, right? And yeah. so I'm going to a different place. I'm I'm restarting and re Correct. rekindling things. So. Yeah. Then I would be like, okay, so where do these ley lines be? And it's like, ah, it's a whole level. Yeah, but that's something that can shift over time. They could be temporary or something, or I use invades, and all of a sudden you have some necrotic strains appearing or whatever, and mm -hmm. something. And right? that a would good be cool. temple spreads its uh, influence, and, and yet yeah, never what, so to speak. You, right. You're close to a druid, the, the grand druid is visiting, and all of a sudden you have fey influence in, in, in a large area and, and stuff like that. So you can imagine all sorts of temple. Temporary old ones, new ones, mm -hmm. shifting ones that comes every certain things. Every when the spring winds come, then you can have certain magic be more influenced, weather yes. magic or something. So yeah, yeah. I, love, I love that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you, uh, and that you can do it per per campaign or or per if something happens in the campaign. Yeah, right. Well, just look at Dragonlance. It's the the, yeah. the phases of the moons. Mm -hmm. It, it, perfect mm -hmm. example. Give me more power, yeah. and I'm like, it, exactly. Yeah. That's yep. a great example. Yeah. The seasons so. or whatever it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. An evil artifact was destroyed here. Now, they, yeah, there's all sorts of things, Troy. You can do. I'm not yep. saying don't do it. I'm just saying I got enough to worry about. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> My great. And, and also, don't, it should be complex enough that it's not super predictable, and it should give you as a DM and a, and a world builder, there should be enough levers to pull on in a magic system so it becomes of course. too difficult to over as a player you should be surprised at times even when you're spell casted like oh i can do this <laughs> or damn i couldn't do that and stuff like that there should be some surprises built in here and there but they should have a logical so once you studied it and you're an arcane or arch wizard or, or like you, you you're playing a 16th level wizard or, or or a 20th level cleric then you kind of understand okay i knew why that didn't function when i was 12th level and, and mm -hmm. we're in that temple or something so i yeah. think basically what it comes down to is that just personalize your magic in some sort of way yeah which, mm -hmm. you know which i i like the idea and i i, I find so few players 
that are willing to or would like to do. I would love wizards and spellcasters to customize their spells. Now, I, it, that doesn't mean that you have to like go through and tinker with the mechanics or anything along these lines. But if your um, your uh, your magic missiles look like uh, tiny green lightning bolts, mm -hmm. or or maybe they look like um, red flying hawks of, of energy or something, mm -hmm. you know, just some sort of theme or something along those lines. I, I think that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's because the, the best thing you could do. Yeah, because you tie into I think an important aspect, meaning magic has one mechanical side, meaning how many pluses and how many d sixes or d tens or whatever you use and and so on. The, so it's mm -hmm. it make it has one mechanical side to it, but it also has a thematical story driven yes. lore based side too meaning how yes. does it work in the world and how do events in the world and 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 so on and so forth meaning how do gods influence magic and and whatever it is so 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 and i wanted my mechanics to be more influenced from the story than was in the normal rules so to speak so that's why i wanted to to create a system that has more story input than than regular less mechanical control and a little bit more story control so i needed more levels that that more dials and knobs and stuff in the magical system that the story can interact with so to speak and right. still control the mechanics somehow so yeah. and that's great anna but you see what I have to go through just to get a stream up. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. My 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 system is definitely not geared to to the the the, the casual convention game yeah. or the quick stream. No, it's it's uh, it's, it's for so it's for lore lore heavy That's sandboxy fine. homebrews. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wanna, it, 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 it just depends. It just depends on 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 the group, right? And the people yeah. playing. Mm -hmm. I have found the majority of the people that I have played with and run for. Yeah. Uh, prefer it to just be cookie cutter they yeah. don't want to do that but, mm -hmm, they just they also, just want to blast the monster yeah with their fireball mm -hmm. and and be done I, with it yeah <laughs> and that's also i think an important bit in in a rule system is that i wanted to hide gotcha, that's Stephanie. more on the dm oh, side extended. meaning I, mm -hmm. me as a dm have to figure out what's strain behind if you just want to right. play a first level with it you don't need to know about that part Yep. I cast magic missile, I cast light, and I, I blast him with an acid splash. Um, you don't need to know what the magic comes from. You don't need to know yeah. what strain. But once you're like eighth level and you go down to another plane or you go into to that weird dungeon where things get crappy or go into sus forest, that's when you might start realizing that, damn, certain spells don't work as well here and, and things like that. So it comes over time. So initially... You can just play just it as usual as 5e. You don't need to worry about it. But there are multiple layers under that that, that is behind the screen, so to speak. Right. Yeah. So, so here's a couple things. Yeah. I have never had – I've never had um, – Someone uh, uh, like uh, go. I, I, well, I just want to. I just want to throw fire. You know, fireballs. That's a that's a sorcerer. Third and fourth, fifth edition sorcerer. Mm -hmm. Screw that. All right. So, um, you get to a point where there's got to like people want fire. People want to be different. Uh, but by if it's just by a little mm -hmm. bit. So mm -hmm. we've done that by incorporating special spellcaster third edition feats into the first yeah. and second edition system and with a little little have, have you added what, the, what they will call meta magic in third edition where uh, you can do a, a little extend bit. the range yes and, and, so and let me, stuff like yes. that yes yeah. and that's incorporated into the greyhawk mage too mm -hmm. so here yeah. i didn't think i would be bringing this one up but let me do this oh this is a this is interesting yeah, because the, that mechanic side is very one, important one and and yeah proficiency is 2023 i think it's the last whether time. you like uh, it or not it's go. still important whether you yeah. want it there or whether you so, don't want it some people mentioned so i I promise Jeff I'm gonna answer your question. All right. So here's our here's our master proficiency list. I don't have that many because we we, we, we I play test the hell out of them. We go down to the yeah. bottom here. Let's get down to um, here here are some of them here. Uh, extra spell slot, which I love and, and I allow this for flexibility. A straight class magic user or straight class illusionist gets this as a freebie at third. So say when they're when they uh, um when they're fifth level, they'll have three first. No, it's four, two, one, four first, two second, one third. They get they, if they have, they'll have extra spell slot, then they can go five, 
two, one, or four, three, one. They can never take their highest level. They can take mm-hmm. a, an extra spell yep. slot at one time of any, and they can change it as they go yeah. of the level below or all the way down to first level. And that allows, mm-hmm. allows for flexibility. So that's yeah. one here. And- Yep. Yeah, and, and just uh, say, Jay and Will, I have one question we sure. need to discuss after both of you. So please continue, Jay, and I'll. I'll no, it's okay. Yeah. You need, uh, yeah, uh, especially casting is good uh, too, Geek. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Battle Touch. This is great for those, especially necromancers, those who use spectral hands, and those that are relying on. It's mostly for the, that kind of magic where you got to go up and do ghoul touch, or you got to do a paralyzation, but it's, it has to be touch, right? Uh, yeah, and and we're not going to deliver touch Chewy. spells at a distance. Well, th- we're not talking fifth edition now. Okay. We're talking first edition, second edition. There's no range touch in first and second edition. No, but there, there, there are certain editions have had, uh, and right. there's been special spells where you have a function where you can deliver touch That's spells. Special like... That's special hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So they or can... through a familiar, some of them. Oh, yeah. Or you can yeah. use your, your there is like a, so a, a spiritual is. weapon or something where you can you can bang them right. in the head from Here, a distance. Here, here's another one. Resistance reduction. This is huge in old school. You can yeah. reduce, like, especially if you're going to have dark elves or, or demons. Target magic resistance re- reduce minus five percent per level to fifth minus three above. And magic resistance is really difficult to overcome in, in first edition yes, because it it's is. like just a per- straight percentage based on eleventh level caster. Yeah, exactly. Right? So it's, so it's that's, really that's yeah. a big one they take. And then if we come down here, spell extension increase spell duration by one point five times. One spell per four levels per day. So a lot yeah. uh, uh, mirror image now my duration can be one and a half times so instead of one round per level or what, mirror images whatever it is three rounds per level it's yeah. now you know four and a half five rounds per level so those are some of the ones that, and they're taken mm-hmm. as weapon proficiency slots in lieu of cool. you know because yeah. we've added in extra yeah slots. that's really um, like your third edition inspired so to speak so yeah. i'd like to throw something out for everybody who runs fifth because there's quite a few and one thing that they didn't do and port over from, and I think it got dropped uh, in fourth edition, because I'm pretty sure it's still around in third, is that magic resistance. And if you want to, there's there's, there, there's a couple of different things that you can do to, uh, because magic is, you know, they, they say, and th- there's a lot of things in fifth edition that is nerfed, but also there's a lot of things that got turbocharged and spellcasters are insanely powerful in fifth edition, yep. insanely powerful. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. there's different things that you can do. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things in like first, second edition, there's a reason that they have that magic mm-hmm. resistance in there. Yep. That's, yep. that's a built in uh, like leveler kind mm-hmm. of thing against yep wizards so yeah. that they don't go in and just like totally can, mop the floor with with everybody you know so that's one thing that should be in my opinion uh reintroduced into into uh to fifth edition i yeah. i i've homebrewed uh magic resistance into uh mm-hmm. basically into my fifth editions yeah. I, I can't take credit for it though because i got it from uh scruffy grognard's advanced third edition dungeon dragons cool because he, he he has uh basically uh it in there and it goes off of um the hit die of the monster is basically what it is. So and basically it's a uh it, it let's see, how does it do it again? So for every hit die it has in I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. up to, I can't remember it off the top of my head. So but it's definitely something that you should put into the into uh your fifth edition game and Probably one of the easiest things you can do is make spell components mandatory. Do that one thing, one thing, hey Patrick, and it will totally change how your spellcasters hey act. And then the other thing you do is don't let them just, oh, you went up a level, now pick your spells. Oh, hell no. Right. Where did yeah. you get that spell? You got to go find that. Spell. And we're mm-hmm. going to, Jeff asked, yeah. Scottish Jeff asked this question. Okay. okay. I'm going to answer it. So, um, Jeff, this is how it happens in my game. I'm going to give you an example for a character that went from 6th to 7th level. All right? And that would be um, Nick Solia, which is Tony Winslow Brittle's character. So she's a multi. She's a fighter mage, multi class. She just, she went up. Um, she went up at Gary Khan up to sixth, seventh level. That gets, so she now has fourth level spell casting capability. 
in my game, you know there's a no spell percent in the, in the old player's handbook to, to, to learn something. Well, that mm-hmm. that's right on. The, that's the that assumes you're going somewhere to research. It's not coming off the top of your head somewhere, right? Uh, so the rule I have is the following: you automatically always will gain one spell through your research of leveling, whether that's training or whatever. If you are the member of a guild, a guild, you can now get two, two spells. And here is the guild list for Altamira's Magic Users Guild. All right. For base magic users, there is a spell list. Now, I just assume that the Greyhawk one is uh, is almost everything, because it's the city of Greyhawk. But not all, but a lot. But there, there's a list. Okay, there, a list exists of which they can learn spells off of in the guild of uh, uh, at Altamira. Okay, that's what we do. Now, sometimes they'll get actually bonuses based on extra library time. Or whatever, and sometimes like it'll be a bonus on an adventure they went on. Uh, you're gonna get extra. You're gonna get three. Okay, no, learn new spells. Also, scrolls can be transcribed into your spell book that ruins the scroll. This is just my personal rule. Cause, mm-hmm. it, transcribe in with a no spell percentage and the right as long as you don't fail it, and then it's in your spell book from that time. But you can't cast it off a scroll. Once you cast it off a scroll, it's gone. It's the same thing. You're transcribing it in, and then your spell book grows that way. So if we um, and let me just bring her up real quick. This is the best way to do it. Let me just go to Nixolia. And the only reason I have Nixolia on the brain is number one, Jeremy's on, uh, and two, um, this character you'll see next week uh, during the uh, Ed Greenwood um, uh, Slopscott Squad crossover event. Yeah. All right, here's Nixolia. She's six seven. All right, uh, and here's her abilities. Here she has extra spell slot, right? And there she is with extra spell slot. And also being a fighter mage gives her more slots. There's her character. And we come down here and she has a traveling spell book. Right. And then here are are her spells. Four with a recast because of her pearl of power. Three. Three because of extra spell slot here. One. And so she got, when she leveled up, she got, uh, she already had minor globe in her book because she got it uh, previously. She got draw mage's instant exit. That's a brand new spell that was found at Gary Khan. Or nice. Thursday night, yep. Oh yeah, um, we got a lot of whole new uh, Circle of Eight spells that Alan's been writing for the game. That, nice. That, oh yeah, a ton of them. And then Ice Storm, and then uh, you know, and that's how it goes. And these are spells she can cast from. My game, I make my people pre-memorize their spells. When I do the All Star games, I give them a little more leeway that they can spell point, because I'm, I'm that kind of a nice guy. All right. So there you go. And that's that's her spell list. Simple. Jeff, did I answer any of your questions? Hopefully it did. Yeah. I can right, just cool. mention a little bit. I, uh, you you completely right with ma- magic resistance and stuff. So so what I've done is that I've taken the, you have the, the spell, um, um, your spell save DC. When you're a caster, you have the, the DC in mm-hmm. 5e, it goes up. So I, I, I basically tone it differently. So you need to, to you need to, to become an expert to get the really high ones, so to speak. And the proficiency bonus is also lowered a little bit. So the casters are a little bit less nasty unless they have have uh, specialized in, if you take expertise and become specialized in what the casting you're doing, then you can reach as high, but it will take longer to reach those. You have to really work in order to, to reach those super, super high ones. So, so uh, because it's eight plus your ability modifier, meaning your spell casting ability modifier, and then, then plus whatever special bonuses you have from magic items or something like that. So, so and I've added in an expertise on, on top of it. But on the other hand, you, I start with zero proficiency bonus, not two. So, yeah. so therefore, I nudge, I kind of, you, I cut them down in the beginning, and then if you're really, really high, you can go extremely high at at the top, so to speak. But you can also specialize in being an expert in saves, to to so so if you want to be expert at dodging saves, you, you <laughs> simply say I, I'm proficient in a save, but I also want to specialize in a save. So that way you can earn another four on top of it too. So so it's I've I've widened the ar- the arms race a little bit. So it's four wider, so to speak, than it is in standard 5D. And I've so I nerfed the spell casters at the bottom. So they have to work really hard to do it, but you can also work on your defenses if you want to. So so it's a, I've four wider than it is in, in regular and also wider 
widen it down so the low, the first level casters aren't as deadly to the high level ones, so to speak. So they nerfed them a little bit, but they can start earning expertise or speciality in from from first level if they want to. So if you mm -hmm. want to be good at casting fireballs, then then you can be. So yeah, Mac. If, uh, Mac, yeah. that post you said sounds cool. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, don't <laughs> I have no freaking idea. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds cool. Uh, I'm not making fun. I'm just saying. I just mm -hmm. yeah. along the paramagnetic radiant and only this ser sapient Zao. I, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I just I, I don't I don't play great. I don't play uh, yeah. uh, spell. There's also more saves <laughs> in, in 5e since you have one save uh, save for each ability. So there's each six different card. saves. And then you have a maneuver save against combat maneuvers uh, as well. So, so there is like seven saves that you can have to learn if you. So it's it, almost impossible if you want to yes. be maximum protected against everything. That means that you will not be good defensive. So you have to pick your battles, so to speak. Yeah. What you? Yeah, because just like with you, you know, the traditional dump stat. It's cool. Man. Mm -hmm. in, it's cool. In fifth edition, you have just... the, you have a traditional dump saving it's awesome. throw. Then. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are no dump stats. See, that's that's a thing that the, 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 I hate that. Uh, it's I don't the third edition the idea stat. or Pathfinder yeah. idea that yeah. you have a dump yeah. stat yeah. because you have these stat. builds. So you have in order to maximize something, you have to yeah. sacrifice something else. I never. Right. That, yeah. so, <laughs> I never um, that another to can. So yeah. Uh, there are like Troy asked a question. There are items. There are things that you can like. For example, the meta magic, which we've only we've only barely dabbled in um, and touched, is uh, you know extending spells or or you know more more damage. I don't like like I'm not going there where I'm. Oh, I'm going to cast my. Sorry, I'm not busting fifth edition. I'm not good because then it's all the same spell. I'm going to cast my magic missiles a fourth level spell. No, it's first level spell. I'm not casting. You know what I mean. I don't want. Well, get the that. difference. The difference between that is yeah. in first edition, the spells go up. They too. do. They do. But see, that's. I in, understand in, that. I understand in, that. That's that's how fifth edition does it. So I if that. if you wanted to to be at that higher one, where in first edition it's it's baked yeah. into the spell already. Mm -hmm. So the meta yeah. magic stuff, I think that's yeah. kind of cool, but I don't think it's necessarily cool with the with Avancian system. Like well, with a with a spell point system, I can. That was my see question. I was going to to ask. Now that we need to get better. there. Man, meaning, yeah. Have Have you guys played with? Because that's the other. Vancian is one way of going with it, and and another obvious way is to use like mana or spell points or, or something. And I then prefer with ritual casting is another thing to to way yeah. to to. Handle. I prefer have you guys spell played point. it? Okay, you ritual point. casting yep. is 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 um. There's ne it, there's never enough. There's, the characters are never high enough, and there's never not enough of them together to do a ritual cast. I've had well, it depends on how time. you what what how do you define ritual casting? Yeah, because it, that was something that came in third edition, meaning that's yeah. outside of combat type of casting. Oh well, that's, that's, that's usually so, okay. Well, that's always existed. And, and right? they, like, they, like, they well they well before like, it wasn't handled mechanically. It was like can can a wizard go around casting light spells or or whatever just to to light up the house if he wants to and and stuff like that even if if he doesn't have any more uh, oh, if he spends well, a few more minutes to do it and stuff like that oh yeah but even that was I just take an example like if you have a first level spell can you if you instead of of going around casting it per round can you spend 10 minutes and cast it six times a day just to clean your house no. or 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 light your your no, it's a sorcerer study. we're talking sorcerers now uh, okay <laughs> yeah. well yeah but ritual it, casting is simply to be okay. able to cast a spell yeah. outside of combat by spending 10 times more time to cast it, so to speak. No. Meaning see, that, that's, yeah. That's what a that, cantrip is. That's what, see, now you've touched on one of the other ones that are, we'll go back to here. spell points because I, oh, yeah, I, please. I, yeah, we'll go back I love, to spell points. I yeah. love spell points and, and I, and in my, my home campaign, yeah. I run, I run fifth edition casting completely different. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you have to decide what kind of magic is your world going to be? You know, well, I there usually... is a workaround that you can use both and I'm going to, but please you... continue. Well, yeah. So like, cause I've often said every time I describe Greyhawk and then everybody, I always get like a backlash from it. It's like Greyhawk to me is a gritty low magic setting. 
you know, and they go, low magic, there's all kinds of magic. And says, yeah, in the hands of the wizards, mm -hmm. right? But the setting itself it, it is not, that's low magic, but the wizards can get extremely powerful. And so they're really the only ones that have yeah. the corner on that. But market. those are two axes. One is how much how powerful magic is available in the world. Another one is how common is magic in general. I yes. like magic that are less common but still very powerful, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. So like, yeah. do you like an Eberron kind of setting? Because Eberron has magic all over the place. Exactly. Some some have then so, then you have like uh, cold magic use uh, creating ice cream bars and you have teleport exactly mail systems exactly. and 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 they've all got that stuff. elevators and exactly all kinds that of that's meaning stuff. yeah yeah meaning you can have high it, it's like how common is magic and another mm -hmm. one is how powerful is allowed in in the world so to speak magic, those are two say, different things yeah yeah like magic in Eberron is basically it takes the place of technology. Yeah. So yeah. it is and a more I don't technologically. Like that. I I'm not a preference for that either. But that's yeah. one thing you you'll uh, you'll have to do for mm -hmm. your world. Exactly. You have, have to, to decide. Have have to make that decision because that's going to trickle down into a lot of other different things. Like yeah. how how is like the wizard going to be really uh, like sure here have this book of spells I don't care you know and just like flip it off mm -hmm. to his to his apprentice like it's no big deal or if it's a really low magic where magic is really rare and stuff it's like they'd be guarding that stuff like it's a state secret to, yeah to, it's yeah. really mm -hmm. hard to get a hold of you yeah. know there there's no such thing as a magic shop you know things like these lines it takes so, years to learn and, and, and stuff so yeah yeah because I think that would be the first basic thing that you would need to cover mm -hmm. and, and go over with, with yeah. the players and get established yeah. because that affects so much other stuff. Oh yeah. That's part of meaning that sets the tone and what the stories will be about. And, and yeah, like you said, magic shops and stuff, but it's mm -hmm. in another thing. I think it's, it's the, the, the spell point versus uh, Vancean magic in my rules. I wanted to keep Vancean magic. So there's spell slots. There's like, mm -hmm. there's like, different ways you you can learn to simply cast an innate spell you say i want to learn to cast light spell or or, or whatever it is some dark vision spell or something and you can mm -hmm. work hard just learn that spell innate so you can cast that once a day or twice a day that doesn't give you a spell slot it just you can just cast that spell and you can you can keep learning spells that you can cast so to speak and and mm -hmm. and that then you go the sorcerer route you just learn by the seat of your pants to figure that spell out and you do it and then you can do the study ones so, so you learn you get spell slots that you can memorize whatever spell you want in mm -hmm. that that takes way more study you become like a, a learned uh, arcane caster or or a divine might give it to you by studying so you have like you can you can acquire spell slots and then you can use them but there is a backup system what if you cast you spend all your magic i have what i call exertion points and those are things that you can use for combat maneuvers and stuff that are strenuous. If you want to do a reaction, you have to spend a point on it. Or if you want to do like a parry maneuver or other stuff, you spend it. But you can also use them for spell casting. And if you run out of them, you can like, I, I took this inspiration from this from both uh, Advanced 5e, but also from DCC. Th that is is because then spell casters they run out of mana or, or spells quickly but they can always burn any more and then uh, all cast anyway and then bad things happen so your your casters start losing an eye and and they, they have a growth and and all of a sudden they have a little <laughs> rat's head coming out and they're losing limbs or whatever it is so so but instead you can you can burn hit points yeah that's what i spells. do it's yeah, like if, same if, you, here. if you run out of your, mm -hmm. your magic points you can yeah. start burning hit points yep to cast same the magic. Too. yeah so so you, so you can simply cast spells until you literally die if you want to yeah well, that's very risky in that sense, but you can. So, so I have kind of the the backup is kind of a spell point system, but that's more like when you're desperate and instead of when you want to sacrifice your own well being, you can, you can do so because I think it's part of the theme. Magic supposed to exhaust you, so so mm -hmm. let's give the character that option or the player yeah. that option. I run it kind of reverse of, uh -huh. of how you do it, as in I supercharge the wizards early. Okay. And then yeah. it's harder okay. for them to obtain the power later. So essentially, uh, okay, so fifth edition, this is how I run fifth edition. And I just wrote up another house okay. rules script uh, for a party, a group that I'm putting together. And it's 
you have spell points. Your spell points are based off of your constitution. Okay. You have one point for one point of constitution. Also, you have some natural ones, so to speak. Then it naturally yeah. so your spell points, your individual spell points are mm-hmm. off of your, your ability to, to channel the magic through your body. So your constitution will give you if you have 10 constitution, you got 10 spell points. Spell of first level costs one point. So a ninth level spell would cost you nine points to cast if you had it. Mm-hmm. You can you gain a spell point per level. So you can see you it's like high level spells, you burn through those spell points like you're going out of style. You yeah, can so cast, all the, cast all the low level spells that mm-hmm. you want. And yeah. then if you wanted to, you, then you can start tapping into your hit points to cast the spells as well. Yep. Yep. But I also have them roll. I don't have the spell just go off. So it's a DC starting at eight for every level of the spell. It adds to the DC first level spells, DC and nine. Mm-hmm. You roll if you don't make it. The spell doesn't peter out. You just have to spend another round casting it. You miss again. You're still casting. You just haven't gotten it down. You're, you know, it's all good. The the higher you your your proficiency gets in everything, the easier it's going to be to cast lower level spells. It'll still be harder to cast higher level spells. Yeah. And it's only when you run and roll a one and you fumble that you'll have some sort of backlash. Which one of the things is you can take damage, you gain levels of exhaustion. So it's of sort traits of, of wild magic, but not as wild. Sort so of, but you yeah. have more control over mm-hmm. how and when. You utilize your magic. Yeah, and it will de- it will be the spell you intend. It's just a matter of exactly when it goes off. Right. And, and and yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you can also, I'm gonna, you know, the DC's higher on something. It's like I'm gonna take extra time to make sure all my T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Yeah. And I'm gonna take a cup an extra round mm-hmm. or to to cast it so then I get advantage on my roll. That's what I'm 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 playing with that too, that you can put exertion points in there and burn mm-hmm. more energy into it. And that way you can either do more damage or you can try to burn through Gosh, magic resistance and stuff. Again. Yeah. yeah. So so I, I want to be able a spellcaster should be able to kind of make that damn punch in, so to speak, because I think that will be fun if you can if you can oh, yeah. kind of damn I'm I'm going to give it all, so to speak, or something. That should be a, a, a a kind of a mechanic for it, so to speak. Right. And and another one that, that we haven't talked about that I also want to ask both of you, do you do like a counter um, a, a spell, a counter spelling, spell duels? There's many different... And, so any, hard any, to do in a yeah, miniature Yeah, hard to do. Game. Yes. Mm-hmm. There is a way to do it for our game. Yeah. If you win initiative, and this is what my players do because they're really tactically good at this. If we yeah. win a net, they go, I'm delaying... I'm, I'm pre- prepping to dispel an oncoming spellcaster, and mm-hmm. that, I allow that. So that, yeah. uh, and that has happened a lot of times to take out some key spells. But you casters. use the dispel magic spell then. Absolutely. That, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah absolutely. The third I edition think... you had that you can you can cast the same spell at them and then both kind of vanished. Oh, I which didn't know that. to me it's kind of boring because it's burned through yeah. a lot of spells and then nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I agree with that. It's, uh, yeah. it's, that comes down to, I, I kind of do it how like Jay does it. It's like, if you want to prep for it, then that's yeah. great. You yeah. know, because for it. I, I say, you know, because like in fifth edition that they've kind of cheesed it out where most spells are just an action to cast. Yeah. It's like, well, it's like, so it dispel magic is not a, you know, that's not a, uh, a bonus action. So it's like, no, you can't, you can't dispel his magic. Well, unless, I, I will always you're uh, allow them to it. ready a spell, so to speak. Yes, you can that's ready what a I, spell yes. and boom, so to speak. So I, I will that's, allow that. Yeah. yeah. So just like, yeah. like how Jay was saying, if they, if they mm-hmm. want to ready it, Yep. I'll, yeah, I'll allow they're, re- they're waiting in anticipation. The last mm-hmm. thing I want to do is chunk my game up where the the rounds start taking three four times that they oh, oh, oh yeah it, it should and, and not that, be more yeah. it's it's more like can you can you have like if if they one cast the spell through another can yeah and, and meaning there are some ideas in third edition that if if an opposing caster cast fireball if i cast a cold blast or, or, or something could, could i neutralize it using an opposing thing like a cold spell or something like that so they were mm-hmm. there were there, there are many different ideas i've seen so many but like 
like like you guys said, I haven't seen one that I really like yet. So so uh, I saw there is a new system come is called DC twenty. They have something called spell duels, and I need that they're, they're kickstarting it now. I haven't studied the detail, but it's a kind of a even beyond fifth edition because they have action points for everything. So you have four action points, and then you can simply. Mm -hmm. spend them on whatever you want to do move four times or, or whatever it is so so it's kind Sounds of like a really new school system but but i'm so, i'm interested to see how they sold spell duels i i haven't pledged to the kickstarter but i will probably buy the pdf once it comes out i had to, to i had to part. quit watching that guy's channel i watched it a couple yeah of times. me too i, I watched it and, a lot. i realized that that's now nah, it's a little bit I'm I'm not old school, but this is even too new school even for me, so to speak. So well, yeah. it wasn't so much because of that. It was the thing, it's like God bless him. And I hope he has a great Kickstarter and yeah. all this different stuff. But it's like I watching people who are new to the hobby, like for it tickles me on one part, but on another part to think like you're kind of an expert on something. It's all yeah. And he's exactly. talking about Been this, there, talking about that. And it's that, like so to speak. That, that, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, you, that's from this, and that existed here already. And it's like yeah. what you, mm -hmm. that's not new. And you know, no, but like, we have to. We we old old farts in this. So, yes, so we exactly. have to we, we've done these but mistakes you, twice already. Yeah, you can teach an old dog new tricks. You just gotta. You gotta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta. Well, but but they all, he he had it, a couple of good ideas and a lot of stuff that I've, I've already tried it and didn't like it. But it's also up to what you like. So so exactly. And there is another one that is called Core Twenty. That's Scott uh, Fitzgerald Gray or whatever I think. It, uh, he, he's done a core 20 system. Super interesting. It's very close to it. I found it out when I was halfway done with my system and he's also <laughs> class-based. Him and mine ideas are very parallel. Interesting. He's more mechanical, less story than me, but otherwise we have basically the same idea for it, which is really, really cool. So I've taken a lot of, of hints and ideas from him too. So he's Tales running a... of, uh Tales of the Valiant just came out. It's exactly. Like, it, That's it's another out. interesting thing. It's a little bit... I've, and you I've, can I've, get the SRD, yeah. which they exactly. just call the no. Black Flag SRD. Mm -hmm. That yeah. that's available now too. So yeah. you can get the SRD for it. Yeah, and it, well. it's a version of 5e with mm -hmm. a little bit more, I would say, story kind of do cool stuff than than regular 5e, and and a few other things. So so yeah, I, I think it's 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 good to see variants of 5e because that's something I can take inspiration from. Yeah, and tougher monsters. Yes. Yes. Very much tougher monster. You die quickly with those monsters. So yeah, well, that's always a good thing to have a challenge. Yeah. Oh yeah. DMs have have lots mm -hmm. of. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So let's we'll roll away from the theoretical. Uh oh. No I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No more promoting other kickstarters. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's just where we. Ha I'm just. Uh, I'm in the look. This intermittent fasting still. I had dinner, but I still feel you know. It's just I had my mm -hmm. coffee, and now I know I'm not going to eat till twelve, twelve thirty, one o'clock tomorrow. It's rough on me, man. My brain mm -hmm. is all over the place. Look, yeah, spells. I have, I, I want to do that. I'll have to talk to you on the side. About <laughs> yeah, that. I don't know if you want to. Well, I lost like uh, eleven pounds. So, um, some ideas. Here's your mage. It's all here's all the classes and races I allow in my game, right? Here's the mage. Notice you don't have Evoker and Voker on here. We have Illusionist, because Illusionist was first edition. We have Necromancer, right? And then we have the Wild Mage, the Elementalist. Incantatrix, yeah. The Incantatrix is, is a Night Greenwood creation, right? Oh, yeah, but you, you mentioned it before. Yeah, Incantatar, so, yeah. Incantatrix. Is a, uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a still, in my entire can I think we have two in f 40 years, two. It's a little yeah. weird. It's a spell stealer, basically. Uh -huh. uh, which, which is its own deal. It's really not a mage, wit, the witch, actually. But the Shadow Mage is its own class. The Greyhawk Mage is its own class. There mm -hmm. are six Elementalists. Wild Mage is its own class. So if you go one, two, that's eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, counting the Daedrics, there's 13 different Mage spellcaster classes I have. Okay? So there you go. And uh, that's a lot, I think. All that's with their own good. lists. Oh, they're on yeah, list. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in that, in the Greyhawk Mage, everyone has a different. What's the word? Um, mentor. Patron? Mentor? Patron mentor. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah, good good point there. So, yeah. yeah patron. Lich, 317. Ooh. 
being sick. Oh, really? Well, Jeff, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't want to be that kind of, I don't want to be that kind of sick. So look, um, let's, why don't we talk about, maybe talk about some, uh, characters in the campaign uh, in the entire Greyhawk setting and just say, wow, there's some quirks here. So I'll give you one that I like. Here's a quirk. Here's a quirk one. If you go, and this is where they got like, what do we do? And they're trying to figure this out. They're trying to figure out where do we go with this because we have this in a book. And I'm going to go to Return of the Eight. All right. So they get there. And now all of a sudden at the end of, the, end of this, three new mages show up, right? Now, w one of them already existed. One of them was um, Warner Starclute, right? So he, he mm -hmm. exists already. Uh, human male, 20th level wizard. Okay, spellcaster, mage. Right? And then you got Theodane, another another wizard, it says, right? You know, 17th level. But, Alamazad the Wise. Yeah. Okay. They don't know, so I don't know if Roger just didn't want to work it out le uh, in, in rules or just said, ah, you know what? So he, they made him an elementalist. The first one that I know that was published, uh, that unless someone else can correct me on that. So, uh, and it talks about he, um, uh, where is it here? Uh, I know it's in here. Uh, it says, oh, here it is. Uh, those in Sorcerer Kit outline in Al-Qadim Arabian Ventures, he has skill with magic involving earth, air, fire, and water. They give him all four and elements that Baclunish recognizes the foundation of all matter, gaining no bonuses to learn from a spell in any of the four provinces. So, there you go. His his, his spells may be chosen from Player's Handbook with additions from Appendix A of Arabian Adventures. And it, but it says there's only nine, only ninth level spells wish, and then it tells you his other stuff. So they've actually taken, for the first time I can remember, they've taken a, um, um, an existing published source, and it's one of the Circle of Eight, and they go, this mm -hmm. guy's really an elementalist. I thought yeah. that was kind of cool, mm -hmm. you know, back then, uh, that, uh, that they went that direction. And I'm like, I wish they hadn't made them all of them, though. Because that's not what an elementalist in this yeah. book... But I can understand why Roger didn't want to get into the minutia of it. You know what I mean? You know. So. Well, back in the in the early days, the the monsters and stuff had a lot of titles or whatever, meaning they were necromancers and stuff yeah. long before there were were sure, any sure. rules for yeah. them. So so That's so true. they would mm -hmm. just yeah. There was a lot of flavor in descriptions and stuff, and they were called all sorts of things, sure. and there were no real rules for it. So. I always looked at yep. it this way as like each each individual element was its individual order and had its own structure and yeah. stuff. And mm -hmm. then you had these guys that came along that were like master elementalists mm -hmm. that could control all of them equally. And yeah. all the other orders hate these guys because yeah. it's all like they they, nice they take it as like a, a blasphemy to the other orders mm -hmm. and stuff it's like i used evil you have demonologists mm -hmm. and and all sorts of spell casters in in i use menagerie of of of, of henchmen but there's no rules we don't know what that means mechanically or anything it's just that they so, so that's the, true yeah that is true. If you go, if you go into the Eyes Evil book, there's diviners, evokers, all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah, many. There are all sorts of stuff that are yep. just they're just titled cool stuff. But it will be cool if you can kind of give them special abilities and they can do things like magic wise and so on. So, what if someone who can who can dabble into abyssal magic or do cool stuff that normal other spellcasters have difficulty doing? So someone else needs to give us only that when you're really really like... evil, you can do. So so it will be tainted. I have taint, so so you have when you if you cast spells can either be tainted good, evil, or chaos. Law is like the normal world where things work. Chaos is when you want to upset the whole world and you want to blow it up, literally, so to speak. So 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 spells, if you cast spells to to kind of to create undead and 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 use negative energy those are tainted, tainted evil the ones mm -hmm. that are delivered to you by demons and oh, and fiends of various kinds they that type of magic most ne necromancy spells they will be tainted evil so anyone who can detect evil if you cast these spells and and do it then you will radiate evil so to speak that's awesome. I like that a lot. Yeah. So, so, so it's not like, alignment is taint. You smell you, evil. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's something you don't see it with your eyes. You, you detect yeah. it with your tummy, meaning it's, Thanks, it Troy. smells yep, bad for you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Pipe it up. Uh, yep. I'm 
trying to find my players. Stick. I'm trying to find my players' handbook second edition to, to yeah. pop that up. But so I guess I don't need to. Uh, so with that, and 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 this is kind of like, uh, oh, thanks, guy. Thank you too. So you get to the point here uh, where uh, this is. I can't believe this book was put together in 90 days. It's insane. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is where, Will, I think you got your basis for a lot of what you did in your latest publication, right? No. Oh, you didn't mm. take any of the spells out of here? Nope. I didn't take a one. They're all new. That's awesome. They're all brand new spells. Beautiful. Yeah, you can smell it or what sense I it stole, in your tummy or, or something. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is awesome. What I stole were the pre-gen characters. Oh, okay. From out of the... Uh, makes sense. Like, like there's guy that comes out of the slave lords. Um, oh, okay, when I, that's cool. When I when I did the write ups for them, um, for uh, on the, the free ones on the Patreon, there's actually a blurb in there talking about essentially what adventure they come out of. Um, so you can you can know where you would be able to find them, but I had to pull all that out when I did the PDF and, and made it ready for for print. Hey, Armin. So, yeah. But, so yeah. so. This came out, and um, I, we saw an opportunity, but we couldn't figure out how to do it uh, for years. And I'm like, do I, I just don't want to add these to the major spell books. I don't want to do that. Now, maybe some here and there appear, and they find them and locate them. Of course you should. But, yeah. I, but, but I don't want them all just going to waste and just, oh, now a, a ninth level straight mage who's in the uh, lands of Irish is casting Bigby's Fantastic Fencers. It just doesn't make sense to me. Right, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as an example, and you got all, uh, all the circle of eight here, uh, except for Jalarzi, which is very few Jalarzi spells that I am aware of, um, are here. More in Morning Canyon, Tensor, you know, there, there's some not the newer guys, but a lot of the old nice yeah. little. And that, all... that comes to the other question, meaning how do uh, spellcasters learn new spells? Meaning a lot of editions, they simply, when they level up, they just got two spells. They can pick any from the player's handbook or something. That's to, I don't like that. They need to like be researched either. or found or figured out. So That's what, yeah. It needs to be yeah. quested for. It, it, exactly. Quested, you have to quest though. it, find research. it in the spell yeah. book. Someone don't keeps it to research. you or well, you research depending it, yeah. on the level this is how i draw the line mm. fifth level if it's fifth level and down yeah you can go and you could find somebody that you can buy it from and then you try to research it and you, you make sure mm -hmm. if you could right? if it's over fifth level that stuff's rare Isn't that's that something that's guilt? like it's like yeah. i gotta go and find this it's like okay who did this or there's a particular mage that is known yeah. for these spells and you'll go and you'll find them and you know to to to, to make the adventure um, you know, in an adventure to get your spells, but, mm -hmm. but then I'm a little bit more of a hard ass when it comes to that. Sort of well, but this yeah, is yeah. not what a uh, wizard's guild's for. Well, that's the thing. It's like if the wizards yeah. that have those higher level spells, they're not going to give it to some punk because it's, it's like guild. I'm, I'm not going to let. It, if it's a still, guild, then some, some wizards might them be the there, fifth. but the really skilled yeah. ones will not be in the guild because yeah, they they'll will... Yeah, they'll help, them, well, they'll they help be... them to get their fifth level spells, but after exactly. that, it's like, you're not getting my high level spells. That's how I'm in charge. Yeah, and and the really powerful, they will either strike out and run their own country, or they will work for someone who runs the country, or or, or they yeah. will some other power, because they will be like top consultants. They have the power, they have the skills. They will not sell themselves lightly, so to speak. Some of them will probably be more altruistic. I'm going to use my powers to defend the world like Tensor. Others uh, will simply be, okay, who can I enslave, so to speak? Now I have the power <laughs> and I will go out and, and screw things. So so you have the whole, uh, the, 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 the thinking of the casters when you're high level and their ambitions and political ambitions and stuff becomes really important. Mm -hmm. Meaning, are they out to, to conquer the world or do uh, they want to save the world or they don't care, they just want to earn money right. or they might just want to serve Bokob and figure out, can I do even more cool stuff and uh, don't go out, they uh, just figure it out. I, so I, I'm going to give you an example. And I want you to yeah? tell it to my face that this is not going to happen. Uh oh. Jalarzi and Mariel. Jalarzi's there, and she's 16th level, 17th level mage, and Mariel's going yeah. up from 12th to 13th level. And she goes, I want to learn, I want to learn Tensor's, uh, whatever, Tensor's Primal Fury. And she goes, nope, go out yeah. in the world and go find it no, yourself. No, 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 that, that's the thing. You can, you can, if you find oh, no. another wizard who can teach you, 
fine if they want to teach We're you. We're in that's the guild. You get it. Okay. So this no, is this is because... this is how I would handle that. This yeah. is how I would handle okay. That. It's like it comes. It's like I want to learn this spell. I'm like, oh, you do, do you? Not a problem. Here's this task I need you to do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You go. You do that task, and you come back to me, it's... and then we'll talk about you learning that spell. It's, it's about trust. Pay, uh, it's a guild. It's you about pay trust. a ton of gold to get. All right. Okay. Yeah, but a, right. a lot of wizards will not. Some wizards will happily sell you all they know about magic for right? gold. Other wizards would not from the gold in the world. They want to They're trust all in you. They're the same guild. Oh, yeah, but guilds, yeah. there's only some wizards that will be, the ones that will happily hand over wiz- uh, spells for gold will be in the guild. Other wizards who wants to conquer the world, they will not give it to They're you. They're not allowed they in the guild. They're evil. <laughs> exactly. But on the other hand, that might be a lot of good ones who simply say, no, I want to keep it because I don't want to give it away uh, because there might be some evil ones in there who get uh, hold of maybe it. I, uh, maybe, so it's, well, it's, for I, me, it's I, like uh, that's part of the story of the world, meaning right, research I, I, comes in all flavors, I, I, alignment wise and, and motives and stuff. Yeah. The kill's just a drinking club there. Okay. So. Necromancers yeah. are in my game are banned from joining the Guild of Wizardry in, in Greyhawk. There's a specific reason for that, right? Oh, yeah, well, they've mm-hmm. tainted evil usually, and they, so they there are no the necromancers and, and, in there. And, yeah, but mm-hmm. like, I have a class that Greyhawk Mage, and they're mentoring and patroning over under other ones, and they're gonna no, nah, you can't, yep. have, you can't have these spells. Yeah. Well, that's and different. I, I want that's to have a, a guild there too. If, okay. if you're if you're mentoring uh, just, under okay. somebody, yeah. I know. You know okay. it's like? And it will Thank be you. a Thank lot of all. mediocre to, to good ones there, so to speak. A lot of and, and also rich people who want their, their kids to learn wizardry pay a heck of a lot of money to oh send my them gosh, there I to love, learn. I love yeah. Arnim's what he said. Guilds are like the teamsters of old. Not everyone is treated fairly. Yeah, yes, okay. exactly. It's like a union <laughs> in, in that sense, in some ways. Like a consultancy <laughs> firm and a union and, and stuff and, and all wrapped up in Guilds are exclusive clubs, I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah, I have only three written up in my entire campaign. I have I've yeah. Hardby, I have Greyhawk, and I have Altamira, and that's it. But yeah. if someone's joining that Altamira group, especially another Knight of Yulik wizard, mm-hmm. and yeah. the, and the highest mage and the order of Yulik, uh, you know, says, you know, what, I don't, I don't, that person's a dick. I don't want that person getting my spell. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, that's yes. I, you know, yeah. you know, and- but. Here, take this for example. Would the would the circle of eight be sharing stuff with each other? Considering I, I have a class would. based on it, yes. It, it's I, don't, a trust I don't know base. if they would. They I don't will, know they if will, they would. Yeah, they will take I, the I ones think, that trust and need. You know? I I could see more to Kane and going. Hey, if you can pull your own weight, then you could be All part right. of the circle, and then wait, wait, wait. Have to maintain your 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 superiority. First off, the, the character has to be accepted to be a patron uh, to have the patron. So it's it's a, it's a very there's only three Greyhawk mages in my entire campaign. One of them is played by a Greenwood, and it's not Aluk because Aluk's dead. So Jawal Severnane, the Dark Elf, has taken over taken over that with uh, with with Ravalantar. He's specifically training him on the ways and style of Aluk. So he's gonna give him Aluk. He's gonna give when he goes up in level. He's, that's part of the class. You're gonna learn sure. Aluk spells. Because, yeah. Yeah, but it's, be like, it's today, not like there's look. 23 Otto Luke Greyhawk mages running around. Oh, give me this, give me that. There's one. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I could, t- and I and could that's totally see you like, yeah. you, you're ready to learn some more spells. They're, they're, they're trying yeah. to get me a rise out of me tonight. <laughs> and it will be like this. Are. Yeah. <laughs> and, and take Tensor as an example. If, uh-huh. if he deems that, that the there's Wizards th- Guild. Uh, teaches good uh, manners and good uh, that uh, wizards right. have responsibility and good and so on. Then I'm pretty sure that he will go there and teach a lot of the the high level the the good students of the guild and and members of the guild good things if he believes that they can handle it responsibly from his terms, so to speak. And there is another aspect too, meaning the oligarchy of the city will make sure that the the teachings and the doings of the guild is in in. In 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 the interest of the city, so to speak, both that they pay their dues financially, but also that they don't bring a lot of wizards who would take over the city and cause uh, mm-hmm. other nations to come and burn it down and and stuff like that. Meaning, would, if they yeah. brew a lot of wizards that want to go on a spell to take over whole countries, even for good reasons, the oligarchy might say that no, 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 we don't want any of that because that brings a lot of of political shit to our doorstep, so to speak. That's not good for business. So there's a lot 
lot of implications, both small and mundane, between wizards who need to trust each other or some who just need the money. And then you have higher political ones, so to speak, meaning in, in Furiundi, it, it's it's simply Belvoir decides his court wizard has a huge power and and he will probably personally oversee who can learn the, the highest right. place in, in the land, so to speak. Right. And, See, and you slipped you up need there, to be in good Anna. terms. Yeah. You slipped up. Uh-oh. Belvors are are actually noted in the Marklands. Oh yeah, what, but but four, meaning his court court. Oh, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. He has four 18th yeah. level yeah. elementalists, mm -hmm. air, earth, fire, and water. Yeah. So so he ain't telling them crap, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's the <laughs> thing. I think mages. they 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 probably need to 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 have an oath that they will serve him and be loyal well, yeah, to him. Well, yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. In fact, we well, yeah. see now you touch on another thing. Okay, so like <laughs> when it when you're dealing with guilds, it depends on the guild's point of view. Yep. I think would dictate how it would be. Like Altamira, your guys are all pretty good guys, right? There's no bad uh, guys. Oh, there's there. some underhanded yeah. people. Uh -huh. Let's see. There yeah. you go. That might be the person that doesn't get the like the well. I'll do this, and then maybe I'll give you the spell. But like. What keeps the wizards in line? Yeah. Each other. So like Belvoir. Okay. So in Belvoir's case, so that That's I could question. see. So the, the other elementalists are keeping the eye on the other guys, right? So they yeah. keep each other in line. And But, but Belvoir like, also have other advisors that are top he does, clerics but, and, but, and stuff but, like that who are the, the head of, of Heronius Church and yeah. stuff like that who might be having a <laughs> That's uh, funny. The the yeah. So, so yeah. Who, who keeps the circle of eight in line? No one. Yeah. No one does. No, that's but the they, they seem to be, Yeah, they're a private outfit of, of stuff that do. That's why Rowley was able to go nuts. And and, and Morning Canaan has to to resort to live out in the Morning Canaan's not here anymore. He's in Forgotten them. Realms. Yeah, I'm he kidding. just travels. I'm kidding. He I'm likes kidding. to travel. So, yeah. yeah, and Tensor he resides <laughs> on that Mage Point little island of shore that is yeah. probably his own little territory. But for, the, that's but probably for a reason. Yeah, it's true. He's got four elementalists in my game. One of there's a we have. Um, Alan's character, he has a quasi elementalist, which is one of the fifth, uh, the quasi yeah. era. His mm -hmm. goal is to become 18th level and be the fifth joining that court one yeah. day because yeah. he wants to be the one that does radiance mm -hmm. and lightning and all yeah. in the court. I, I, so. I think it's really cool that he has uh, four. And that's probably mm -hmm. like he's a king and he can kind of show his power as a mm -hmm. regent by not having one, but four really high level wizards who can keep his magic abilities and and he, he's probably part of his security offensive and 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 all sorts that that can do cool stuff and it was like the at rossi's you had a 20th level that the court wizard karuk and others who, who were the over king's wizard they were 20th level and and they were replaced once every fortnight or something like that in 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 the last and karuk was one of them and there were several others who who, who were, were they were all 20th level and they killed each other and stuff yeah, we're so, having fun tonight and it's all yeah. good fun everyone just yeah. That. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. And I have the story of Karuk's uh, 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 cat that was his familiar that fled because he didn't like him. So so he fled, but he learned enough to 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 put terror in whole village because of, <laughs> of little commoners because he, he had been been the court wizard in Rossi, so he was like a, the fourth level of the challenge challenge rating for the little cat, and he was like a black cat that that had enough magical abilities that he could enchant a whole village to do his biddings and the characters came in there and they thought he's an evil around and and they That's almost awesome. rounded out or <laughs> half the crazy, village was rounded up familiar? to be killed by by the paladin before they figured out that it was actually the cat that was the problem that oh. is awesome that yeah. is awesome i think now this is this is how i run morton kane so morton kane he personally makes sure that none of the wizards get out of two out of line Mm -hmm. And he's got the circle eight, which is kind of just his front. Mm -hmm. And basically, if he thinks anybody's going to one way, so or he's the, the magical day, court in, and and he's and, the Don. He had yeah. the people mm -hmm. come kiss his ring. And yep. it's like, basically, if he thinks you're getting out of line, he'll go and he'll do something about mm -hmm. it. You know, yep. that's Skagath. like he would also at some at sometimes he might Skagath. pull back the reins on like opposing eyes. Yeah. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm uh, starting to develop a new uh, theory of, on. I'm oh, sorry. 
well, because if he pulls back the uh, the reins on Ayus and Ayus is a threat, then that maybe will draw the attention of some of these other more powerful wizards that do mm-hmm. something or whatever. And yeah. so he doesn't necessarily have to, you know, so physically you're, get I, involved. I, I, I'm going to end this this topic on this part of the answer, a yes or no question. Uh-oh. Will, did Morden Kanan uh-huh. just let Rari go wild because of he wanted to kill Tensor and Otto Luke? That would make complete sense to me. Okay. That would make complete sense to me. But for me, I'm I'm starting to reimagine uh, the, uh, Morden Kanan's balance, mm-hmm. and and uh, it's not a balance between uh, good and evil. I have it as uh, he he wants to put a balance between the old and the new, meaning the old uh, Flan world and the new Great Kingdom world, and he wants to 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 balance those two. And that's when he got nestled in, <laughs> in with Robillard and, and others because they would dabble in this stuff too. And he he was also with Ayus and others because he he saw it because he he saw this politics and he he wanted none. He didn't want them to try and destroy each other. He wanted to say, well, okay. come on, let, try to live in peace in this. And that was I have it that that was the balance he was trying to to establish. And it didn't go that well. And and that's why he lived in the Yatils and he's trying to figure out the new roles, so to speak. And and he hasn't firmly put he doesn't know if he wants to to now go between Ayus and then he's seen the Horn Society and he's now confused because there is realignment happening in real time. And and his idea of how the world works has now shifted. And and that means that he's also not trusted because he has these ideas and he was so powerful that that power corrupts in a way. And for him, it was not that he became evil. It was just that he got stuck in his ways and he thought the world was working one way and then the world started to work very differently and and that meant that that he had issues with that so to speak so 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 he's talking to a lot of big political powers but he's not really put it's ready to put his hat in a ring and and go for one or the other that means that no one trusts him fully they all want him on on their side but he doesn't really know which side to be on yet so so he's kind of a little <laughs> bit of, of he doesn't want to put his hat in the ring with Belvor, the the Luna and the Elves and and Shieldlands, or or or. But he he doesn't like Ayus and he doesn't want to be on the Ayus side. But the problem is that if you're not on one side, then you're kind of automatically on the other side. And he he doesn't really like that part. So he's he's trying to be like Sweden or or, or someone neutral in, in in these conflicts. And 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 that means that you have to play on the sidelines. So, but he is is still hoping that it might be a role for him in the future, or he might have to go whole hog in. But the problem is neither side really trusts him. Because he has never put his uh, his uh, emphasis. He hasn't risked anything for any of them yet. So what a Exactly, he's well, not he's not loyal to well, to one of the sides. Watsy so. and Hasbro trust him. They mention him ten times more than they mentioned freaking Elmer <laughs> oh, yeah. in the freaking movie. Oh yeah, he's yeah. He's, yeah. he's become yeah. He, yeah. Morden Canaan has become. But I the, don't trust Watsy. Their, their number <laughs> one wizard. Insane. Wait, I, what? I know. Wow. No, I don't trust them completely. Holy. So to speak. So, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the that's the <laughs> thing. So 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 you yeah. can't trust them with, with stuff like this. Yeah. We won't even go there tonight on the Watsy. No, no, but it, it's kind of meaning. Yeah. What I wanted to say with this example is that there are many different ways you can spin this in your campaign. There's yes, many of course. Different ways you can you can you can tweak and and use these things like. Magic Guild and and how things mm-hmm. work. That there are many different aspects we, to this. We thought forever on how. Once again, it's. I'm not. No, I'm not trusting a new canon source. He just, <laughs> Sam just told me he just made that up. I'm like, I never, I never read that. Nice evil. Holy <laughs> shit. All right. So so um, what was I saying? We, we had to figure out a way. For example, how do do we get spells without everyone having every spell? Right. And and we get, came up with a balance, and the balance was, for example, you get a scroll, you can write it in, but that scroll disappears off that. You can't share that scroll with everyone. You take in a if you take a captured spell book, you write it out of your that spell book, it, it, that disappears off that spell book and goes into yours. You could screw it up. You have to figure out a way to limit magic, um, and then research when you level up one spell. Two, if you're in a guild, because it pays to be in a guild, except for not just drinking buddies um, and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, we had to figure that out balance-wise. 
It's just and I also see that it to me it seems natural that a yeah, guild no. could be very good if you're an up and coming uh, low level if you want to learn the basics and you want to work your way in that's and you have the money then it's probably a good the great way to do it. but once you're powerful enough then you want and you want to strike in and you strike out and and use your your magical abilities to serve someone else or serve yourself even then then the guild might not work for you anymore because then all of a sudden you have big political ambitions or or, or we want to conquer the world or, or just conquer another country and stuff then the guild then you probably surpassed the usefulness for the guild so to speak so once you you if you're tensor or morning canaan or something like that then then you're more powerful than the guild wants to tolerate really or or they probably want to have you, but they also want to control you and, and, mm -hmm. and what you do with it. And and if you have big big ambitions to, to run part of the world, then then you're more powerful than, than the guild allows you to be, or the oligarchs even wants allows you to be. So 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 once you reach 15th level or higher and you can start dabbling in eighth and ninth level magic, then you're on par with the rulers of the world. And then you can either be a cleric or bokob and and just dabble in magic and and sell or give the the gift to others. But if you go adventuring and you start killing big stuff in the world like dragons and demon lords, then you're a political entity, you're a political player, and and that right. that becomes so you, you you attract enemies. Yeah. Forty four <laughs> years of my campaign. Yeah. How many how many player characters can cast seventh level spells? mage spells in my campaign trivia question you mentioned uh, it a few times and it's not what that level many. you have to be for seven in first edition. 14th level i think 14th level 14 in old school if i remember uh, there's only i think it's the same in couple yeah. i think maybe two you're close it's it's three and one npc four okay four it's no yeah, more, really more NPCs. You must have had more NPCs that can cast. Well, not level. not interactive. There's one in the order ah, of Ulic. Gotcha. There's one in yeah. the order of Ulic. Mm -hmm. He actually came out of a G1, Funkin' Hotty Peak, right? There's one. But uh, so yeah. there's there's Fensic. There's uh, I don't uh, there, I don't even count Skeev because Skeev was brought up from first. Yeah, Druid. Sorry, are, Lena, are, they, they scale quickly and spell. Eighth level spells. How many? Hello, Skaget. Yeah. Eighth level spells. How many? One. One. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. One. That's and ninth character level. Fencing. Ninth nine. level. There was an NPC, but he's disappeared. We talk okay. about the crazy Bill Laughlin guy, right? There was one NPC uh, back. He was like 18th, 19th level, and he's gone. So really, I have no one. Now that doesn't mean that there's not a circle of eight member, but I'm just saying my campaign. There's no one. Yeah. Guess. Hardly any resurrect. Well, that cleric spells, but yeah, but, yeah that's cleric. Yeah. That's only up to seven. Mm -hmm. But you still need yeah. to be 16th level uh, priest to, to do that. So yeah. resurrections are tough to come by. That's why those rods of resurrections you can find as a magic item are very, very in demand. But all right, I'm sorry, I, I got off on a tangent on there. No, I, I want to share good. I yeah. want to share this. I want to share this. And thank you, there, Skagath. Darling, we'll yeah. see you in a little bit. Um, so here is Ed Greenwood's character, the highest level. Greyhawk Mage in my campaign currently, believe it or not. There's only three. Ravalantar, a Greyhawk Mage of Adaluk. Okay? Right here. Note, due to Adaluk's death, your mentor for training is Jawal Severnane, who continues his teachings. So he's the Dark Elf who never leaves the library of Greyhawk. Right? So, and here's all his stats and all. Here's all his special abilities that really add up. Um, uh, um, uh, his proficiencies. Uh, they actually can use weapons. They're, they're very, just because like tensor was combative, they have some combative abilities. But if we go back mm -hmm. here, um, so you know, Grail College of Magic is, uh, you know, so he's a guild member. Okay, I won't, I won't harp that too much. But he's the only one. This is there's only one. There's only one of each one. Now I may allow someone to do Leomond, or I may allow someone to do another mage. It's not in the circle currently. This is not circle. This is a Greyhawk mage, right? Class. It's not a circle of eight class. Grail Mage. So Tensor has one. He's not in a circle anymore. All right. So I'd allow someone to do Theodane or whatever. So here are his spells. Um, all right. Notice a thing that uh, is really cool about this spell list. Some of these spells you won't know because they're custom to our to our, our game. Look at all the name spells and stuff you may be like. What the hell is this stuff? Right. But there are some spells here that are Forgotten Realms because you know I love stealing from. Spells like Agonizer Scorchers here, 
Many Jaws, that's one of Ed's favorite ones he can cast. Mel Sassadaro's on here. You don't see Matt. I let him get Magic Missile. You don't see Fireball or Lightning Bolt. Because these guys want to these guys want to find the rare spells that are out there. And they use them. When they get them, they bring them spells that are lost. Like Drawmage's Gas Collection. Dur, I spelled that wrong. And Drawmage's Many Steps were both found at Gary Khan from that great Greenwood Dragon. Right? Yeah. He took nice. them back, then he's allowed to use them in, and he gets access to other spells in the rare spells in the library in compensation for that. That's part of what the Grok Mage does. They they're almost like seekers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and that's that's kind of where where we go with that. And I think Ed is Ed um said and, and Skag, if that was really kind of you, and it's great to see you, man. Thank yeah. you so very much. Um Ed said to me. Um, if I if if, if, if Watsy asked me to write something up, um, I wouldn't do this, JJ. But I'd love I'd steal the idea for Forgotten Realms. I'm like, cool. Yeah, but the, but they're not going to ask him to write up anything, right? But he he really loved he really loves this. Mm -hmm. So the Grok Mage rules are here. I can will not share this with anyone outside. We're still play testing it. I will give you advice on how to make up your own though. Okay, so just note. And of course, you want to photocopy and snip all this they have all these abilities they have extended ranges they they can cast spells from one to four levels higher so his aluk spells he can cast one if he gets lucky up to 12th level like elementalists they get increases in abilities they get increases in spell slots um and it's a cool it's a cool little flavor and i wanted to yeah. do this because i didn't want to waste those spells that are in the book now with that, this is a first or second edition. With that, let's go here. Will, let's take a look at what Will's done. And I think you got, you all, hey, Curtis, I think you all could do something similar. 100%. With I can this. Do it. Anybody can do it. With with the stuff Will has put together. So, Will, why don't you discuss this? This is the, well, this is, this, and this is going to go. It's cool to free. call them Graymore Adventures. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, Graymore Adventures is basically my tagline for uh, all my See you, Skagath. IP removed stuff. So mm -hmm. it's it's You're another awesome. tip of the hat to let people know, so to speak. that, And, and in, yeah, I say in there, it's like for the first official uh, game setting for the world's most popular role playing game. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And uh, official is the key point there. So, <laughs> what someone's going to win this tonight, John? And if not, you can just become a Patreon member of Will's, and you can download it like that. Yeah, uh, it's great. There's so many. What's your, lot five of bucks a month, there. right, Will? No, no, Pick five bucks. There's there's different tiers. Five bucks is the really cool guy level. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you just want to give me extra, that's awesome. Then there's the three dollar. Um, uh, uh, tier which allows you to vote and then there's a dollar tier and a dollar tier any pay tier will get basically yeah. um the stuff that i put out that has uh like this when i put out the pdf version for all my um it's on the, the, the uh um for all of my patreons Whoops. that were paid ones the three dollar tier allows you to vote for what I do on stuff. You were just looking at that right there was yeah, for ro voting for the, for, for the, the rogues, rogues. Yeah. for the rogues, yeah, the upcoming rogues. Uh, um, but we want to get to this in a second here, but so all right, let's go, let's go through some of this. All right, hold on. I, you know, you think I should, I should have this pulled up. Let, let me open it up. <laughs> <laughs> look at all this stuff. Uh, um, look, um, so uh, is burn spelled the same way? No, that's different. See, that's the, I changed. I had to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that here is this PDF you're looking hey, at prof. is the one that goes out to the public. So this is why I could have that behind the paywall. Ah. The you know, this oh, is I the one the that you can buy off of, um, off a of drive through and the print version that uh, comes through. So this um, is the one I downloaded though. Uh, uh, yeah, the paywall. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, because it's it because the names on that are are changed. Okay. So that's that's all changed right there. So burn, of course. Where does he come from? Rufus and burn. Holland. Yes, ex exactly. He's for, he's from Muhammad. Andrea. Now Andrea comes from. Yeah, man. Let me pull up. Uh, <laughs> let me go into the. Uh, uh, 
And look, these are OSR. Show. These are old school and fifth edition. Got everyone. So if you're, no matter what you what you're playing, you want to get this. So, yeah. Because I have written in each one of them. I want to say Andrea is from. We can just go to here. Let me go. Slavers. It will. Yeah. There you go. So Fan this is turn. where we got to go to. Go to collections. Pidgard. Let's see here. The Enchanter. Andrea the Conjurer. Uh, she, Andrea Young started a priestess of Zilchis. Um, and then I've got the, the works are here. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, how, how's it? Show more. There we go. That's magic items. Where's my wizard? Oh, Dwellers of the Forbidden City. There it is. I so won. you found it quicker than I did. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's all right. I just pulled it up. Okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So basically, I went through the uh, Dwellers of the Forbidden City. I went through the back. That is I go awesome. And I take a look mm -hmm. at the um, uh, the uh, hey, uh, characters that are in there. And hey, I chose one of the wizards. And because a lot of those, uh, unfortunately, not all of them named them, but a good, a good like 60% of the pregens that are in the back of the adventures are named. And so. Uh, that's and she is like uh let's see here the first one that i have up on here is like fanstern yeah the illusionist okay, okay yeah and fanstern comes out of i do believe he's from slavers right so and he's an illusionist so essentially what i did is i went ahead and with his spells um they're all illusionary illusionary based but then i even went so far as to uh take them and tweak them into a certain uh uh, more specific for example um hildegard is a transmuter okay and in fifth edition that means altering of some mm -hmm. sort so yeah. the alteration spells i had Hild hildegard to be all into bugs so like all of the transformations have some sort of oh, insectoid cool. Mm -hmm. Setup and I messed up and I didn't realize this until afterwards and it was changed between what was printed here with the actual Greyhawk stuff and the other one. I had Hild Hildegard is um that's she's a girl. Hildegard and I had him a dude and, and I made him a dude. <laughs> that's right. So um well I, there's I, been I, other upset on that. We should not like talk one. about that more. But there's been other happenings if you yeah, if you look at the uh, art. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. it, the funny thing is that I always thought it was a woman, but I saw it. So yeah. for me, it was like, oh. so so because well, <laughs> it shows it shows on because they generally when they do those pregens, they have like a chart and it's like and it just has like the lines and then you just cross reference I, and it'll have it had sex on there and I just obviously misread it. So it's okay, and, and, and I don't go. think that's yeah. a big deal. Uh, just note this: my son's putting together the 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 D and D Lego, mm -hmm. and they're smart. They put two different mm -hmm. uh, sex heads. Male and female right. for all for yeah. them in there, and it solves the problem. I mean, yeah, just, just, you know. So yeah. yeah, all right. So somebody was saying saying that about the figure they did for the red box because yeah. they said because it was a girl, and it was they like should make two versions. That's what, we're that's, about, that's the what they were saying. Uh, yeah, it was like it should have yeah. been. You should have yeah. did both, and I was yeah. like. Yeah, you should have because that would have been perfect. My son's having fun. Yeah, that would have been great that you wouldn't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that whoever came up with it probably like me thought it was a woman because it was like almost chainmail bikini and long hair and stuff. So I mm -hmm. just assumed with the with nude legs and stuff. I just assumed it was. I didn't think much of it, but I always assumed it was like a woman. <laughs> so I wasn't. I was like, "What is it? Isn't it a woman?" <laughs> Sarg in the dark. Where does he come from? Yeah. Uh, I just is he slaver in slavers? Nope, he's in probably the. If you were to say what is the most um, famous of all modules, Temple of Elemental Evil, that's where he's from. Oh, oh, he's in level four. So he's he's down the dark elves. Ah, yeah, he's a prisoner. See? Huh? Yeah, he's a prisoner. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and, and 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 they basically he's he's an evil dude, but right. like. He, he, he plays nice to the party so they can yeah. let him go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look, you did a so, 3.5 conversion for him too? Says actually, him. I didn't do the 3.5 conversions. The 3.5 conversions, hold on one second. Someone else did sure. them. Somebody else did them and sent them to me, and then I put them. Oh, up well, that's myself. nice. So some of them are, not all of them, but some of them are. There should, should be what 3.5s for all of them. If there's oh, okay. not, all right. 
Um, I didn't look. I have to go back and double. But they're check not it. in the publication. That there's only OSR and fifth in that one. Correct. And the publication only has them. If you want the three point five conversion one, you have there's to go um, to to the actual articles on the Patreon okay. for it. And hold on, I want to make sure that I give proper credit where credit is. Damian Edwards. Cool. There you go. I couldn't remember your last name, Damien, and I didn't want to mess mm-hmm. up. That's <laughs> awesome. So, um, Damien had contacted me. He was like, hey, these are great. Do you mind if I do thir- th- uh, third edition ones? I'm like, hell yeah, I want you to. <laughs> and so he went ahead. That's and great. Did, and yeah. then we, I went ahead and I, I put them up there. So That's great. That is awesome. So yeah, the Ever Mysterious Tim has hopped on, and we were talking about the highest level. He's got like Fensic. Is like the highest level that's really yeah. brought up from you know he, fencing and Leuven were always adventure with Hawk and Gazumbo back in the day, and so they're high level. So what is the name of the patron? Uh, I'm sorry, what do you mean? Uh, it's great. Uh, you mean to get here? Or link to yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold like on, it's a great Hawk project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone put it in there. I'll put it in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I should have it in a shout out. Um, I should. I thought I did. Let's see. But I had so much. Dude. Dude. Let me get there to it the is. I got it. I got it. Okay. I was, I was I got circling it. back to the yeah. main page. I got page it. So I, got I, it. I, I knew I had it in a shout out. I just got to find it on whatever page. I literally have like 200 shout outs. But yeah. I found it. So um, so let's go back to the publication here. So so, yeah. mm-hmm. a dollar you join and you, you get – when I release the stuff that's behind the paywall, you get that. Three dollars you join, you get to vote. Um, right now, currently uh, – because rogues, and I, I, I accredit you to this, Jay. <laughs> what's what's from, that? From the last, from the your last show where you were talking about yeah, we need um, to rogues. thieves and whatnot. Um, because I ran the poll of which class, and I was mistaken. I thought there was only three, but I've got five left. There's bard, sorcerer, sorcerer comes in dead last every time. Nobody cares about sorcerer. Uh, barbarian, fighter, and rogue. So there's the five that are that have yet to be done. Mm-hmm. Um and Rogue won uh with 31%. So and then it was a three-way tie between Bard, Barbarian, and Fighter. All right, so let's see which one do I want here. Uh, 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 and we have basically what I do then is I put up so uh, Rogue uh, one, no. I I I come up with a I come up with 12. Uh, different ones. So we've got the Scarlet Brotherhood agent. Oh, Chris, uh, uh, probably only one. Yeah. It's, I, oh, God. Scarlet Brotherhood is first. It, burn, it yep. burns. Oh, yeah. 40%. Oh, Everybody wants A lot of people want to see that. Yep. Yep. You got the guild spy, which essentially some, it, they're, they're agents that uh, work for the guilds carrying out, uh, yeah. you know. That's the one I picked. Enforcing their needs and what have you. Uh, the Rene Bargeman, uh, Iron League Scouts. I like the Flan- Rene Bargeman too. Yeah. Flan Stalkers, Iridian Blades, which are sort of like dandies. Yeah, that sounds cool um, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bashlunish, uh, Backlunish Mystics, which are basically they're con men. That they're soothsayer con men is what they are. Um, uh, sea Rovers, uh, the Ayu Spook, which is basically like an Ayu's agent that goes around and does different things for yeah. uh, for Ayu's, of course. Uh, the uh, Ten of Freedom Fighters, uh, Beggar's Guild Operative for the City of Greyhawk, and Kewish uh, Smugglers. So there lots you go. of good stuff, dude. So I mean, you're on a roll, which is awesome. And uh, speaking of, so the art is being done now by Dan. No, oh. different artists this time around. Oh, yes. Um, and this is uh, I'm I'm giving I'm I'm trying out a different artist. Not that I don't love Dan. I love Dan to death. I still intend on using Dan. I use Dan artwork and all is in this uh in the spell tome of the council eight is uh Dan Smith Bart. Um but the art is being currently done for the first installment of the IP removed uh and print versions of the archetypes. So Warlocks is gonna get published here soon mm-hmm. and so w- there'll be a print version and a collected version of all the warlock archetypes that i did for uh for greyhawk all right so i want to read up on a spell and i'm going to do that big B's, uh burns ward of damage redirection page 36 hmm, let's see an osr because i don't care about the 5e version sorry everyone <laughs> 
Do, do, do. Fourth level. Duration's one round. Well, one minute, which could be go in to ten to be a ten melee round. <coughs> what a creature within range against ranged a, a, attacks. <coughs> All incoming damage to casters level plus intelligence modifiers are protected back. Wow. So the spell was cast by a 7th level wizard with a plus 2 intelligence modifier. 9 points of all damage are taken. Redirect it back to the source of the damage. All damage exceeds the redirect amount takes, it makes it through and damages the target like normal. That's pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. That's, and if it lasts, so, yeah. I would, see, I would mess with durations here because the way I play, I'd make it one round per level, which would make it seven rounds. If there it was a, cast, yeah, we, there's all, always going to make touch. Components, a ball of rubber. And, uh, you know, but you, you should have been more specific. You should have here in chat. You should have done a blue ball of rubber. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, so if you if you saw the you saw the game yesterday, right? I have right? a I had a gnome jester named Chudley, who would get out his blue balls and he juggled them. Juggle he juggling them. four blue balls, by the way. So and daggers and stuff. That's all you can do when he gets to that point. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah, there's not much he can do at that end of that fight except juggle his blue balls. So, uh, all right, so that's Burns here. So let's see who else uh, we want to go to here. Uh, let's go to the Necromancer. Sargent. Sargon. Sargon's. Yeah, Sargon there. Shh, let me see one here. Oh, it's a lot of shadow spells, too. Yeah, that's basically Sargon's spells are shadow spells. So he's a shadow. Okay, he's a hybrid Necromancer with, with a shadow. In 5th uh, edition, shadows are kind of uh, folded in with necromancy. So. <laughs> Yes, he was. He's doing four. I had a great background for for him. So we'll talk about that in a second. I don't want to. All right. So Sargon's Shadow Vortex one thirty one. Boy, there's there's a lot of for 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 five bucks a month. Everyone like to get a, a two hundred forty spells. Uh, just like Anna's Anna's Patreon's worth it every penny. This is worth every penny. Everyone. All right. Sargon's Shadow Vortex third level, a twenty foot tall cylinder of forty foot radius. Centered on a point you choose within range. Range is 120. Okay. Summon forth the realm of shadow, a whirling vortex. The high winds of pitch money make it difficult to train and have creatures move so you trap within it. Okay. All right. So basically, it paralyzes you if it goes, you go through it. Cool. Simple. See, that's simple. Make it easy. Don't overcomplicate spells. Yeah, that's terrible. Yes, it is. <laughs> Although I do find myself doing that from time to time, <laughs> and, and and you know, like, and, and I always, I always say I got one over on Ed when I, Ed admits that he, like, I go Ed, Agonizer Scorcher is not a freaking sec second level spell. It's way too nasty. He's like, yeah, I know, but mages didn't get anything back then, so I had to overpower them. I'm like, so you admitted that you made a, you made this spell second when it should have been fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. <laughs> So I will, of course, if I say, "Well, oh, this is a little imbalancing," I would say so. I would change it. There's no Will doesn't care what you do to this. Nope, it's you know? yours. It's yours. So everyone get it. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So, so, okay, <laughs> and and well, how many spells have you researched? Well, well, you've researched now and created lots of spells. Meaning, how many spells, Jay, have you created yourself for your campaign? <sighs> Good Whoa, question, please. Anna. A lot. Yeah, meaning like ten hundred. No, I don't. So edited is a different question. Okay, so, but yeah, you probably edit. Yeah, I've edited yeah. all my spells now. I've, I've yeah, them a bit, but uh, I've only created. I think I created like twenty five new new ones completely from scratch for my campaign. So about twenty five. Myself, uh, myself it's that. probably that or up to up to forty. I think yeah. I haven't created yeah. that many from scratch. But you also taken them from so many cool sources and used them. Yeah. So, yeah. so here's an example. Uh, let me just real, let me find this real quick. I'm gonna go uh, if I can go to air. Uh, so you have like the great net spell book and stuff. Yeah, like you, I'm gonna um, go to stuff. air spell descriptions here. Let's see if I can bring this up here without crashing everything. All right, so I go to this and I notice something when I'm balancing and I'm making my elementalists. There's not enough air spells. So uh, yeah. So when I take a look, I will, um, in in this elementalist book, 
I go and I always keep a running track of what I did, what I had. And this is right now. There's 90. This is of all level one through nine. Now remember, yeah. elementalists can use general magic user spells that no other elementalist is unique to. So they can use detect magic, or they can use like you know basic stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they cannot use fireball if they're not fire and thing and and, and things like that. Fire is 92, water 90, 88, air has 92 now, earth 88, quasi 90, para 88. So it's pretty well balanced over the nine levels. Yeah. But air was missing a ton of spells when I first did this. So mm -hmm. if you come onto this, and this is like these are these are spells that are from Great Net Spellbook. A lot of them, a lot of them, author unknown. I I should go through one day, uh, like I don't have time, and go through all and check all these email addresses. Remember, that's uh we that's how we got Alpha Anna. You knew him, right? You know, that's exactly. How, yeah. 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 J Jason Nelson. Jason yeah. Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, who's, yeah, uh, for legendary games. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So this one, I always put Lord, I should put Lord Gazamba. Sarius Fog Giant Manifestation. It used to be Sarius's Fire Giant Manifestation. So I was ah, like, so I'm just going to switch it to an air spell mm -hmm. to add an air spell in. So that's yeah. one there I modified it. And, but... and air elementalists should have a lot of cool weather spells. Absolutely. So, 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 so that, that yeah. makes a lot of sense yeah. to have. Yeah. Well, here you go. Here's two I made. Here's number one, eighth level twister. Nice. All right. There you so go. And yep. it's simple. Mm -hmm. Duration is four rounds, 20 foot width by two times foot level length. This spell summons an unintelligent twister. It'll move in a line from an initial summoning rate of 16 inches, which is under 60. All creatures in its path must save for its spells over 9 to 54 points of damage. We render unconscious two to 12 rounds. All creatures under four hit die are killed instantly with no saving throw. Blah. Okay. And I was like, that hey. is nasty. It's eighth level. It's yeah, only but... and it's only air. See, here's the thing: it's only air elementalists. No mages can cast oh, that. Oh yeah, it's but, only but an air elementalist. yeah, but to take that at a bunch of of, uh, and it's based on on. I would base it on size or weight or something like that. Everything <laughs> below a certain weight will be like thrown up in the air. And then there are currently zero air elementalists in my campaign that are known that can. Cast no, but that spell. I, I, I would think uh, NPCs. Meaning, come on, well, we have maybe, an air but... elementalist, 18th level that will come in and be hired by. Uh, <laughs> The new over king and 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 he will send them out to teach these nasty villagers something and throw them up in the air. Well, yeah. Well, the, the, here, this is worse. Neighborhood. Here's tornado. Yeah. That's ninth level. Oh God. Yeah. It moves in a line in a reduced summing rate of of twenty uh twenty inches. Uh, those say uh in its path serve must save or suffer fifteen to ninety points of damage to be rendered unconscious for twenty rounds. All creatures under five hit die are killed instantly of no saving throw. Those failing their save by three or more are also killed instantly. There you go. Oh damn. It's my fault. That is tough. <laughs> that is tough. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Supposed to be. <laughs> and you That's complained it. when I had a spell that killed them after 10, 15 rounds if they didn't flee instantly. <laughs> but it's an 18th level spellcaster. Yeah. Now, technically, mm -hmm. we know of one. Belvoir has an air elementalist mm -hmm. in his court. But yeah. we don't. And I guess Alamazad the Wise, if he has it in his book, could cast it too. Yeah. So, and I have a couple of these that I needed to fill in spots. So I did. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I simply, uh, I, I created, I use the spells. So one of the highest, like, eighth or ninth level is like. Doom of Despair. That's like a mile across, and and if you cast it, and if you don't run, then you're dead. So to speak. That's it's, I have one of those. It's uh, yeah. in, in there. Uh, uh, Let me go to Quasi. Geez, who did I do that? I think it's the illusion. I think it's an illusion spell. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. all right, this is Quasi spell description. Now, notice Alpha's all over here. He loves them. So Jason Nelson, remember we had him on. Jason Nelson's all over the place. Jason Nelson, Jason. Look, oh Alpha, yeah, but Alpha, he's very. Alpha. He's still doing lots and lots yeah, of cool stuff for legendary stuff. games. Yeah. So I think I a lot of, especially Pathfinder and and Five E. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. I think I had enough, but there's Alpha mm -hmm. spells like Shock Sphere is one of our favorite ones. That came Paul Walker. No, not the one from Fast and the Furious, but but. You know, it's whoever Paul Walker created Shocks here, one of the most, the best second level quasi elementalist spells we have. Regular mages cannot cast that spell. Now, there's spells that cross over. Lightning Bolt is a crossover spell. There's always spells that cross over. There's spells mm -hmm. that cross over between a necromancer and a mage, like Burning Hands or, you know, Enervation. Right, you know, so you're going to get yeah. some that cross over. So just know that there are spells that do that, but the, 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 the key special ones. That makes them unique, and that makes them, you know, uh, special when you see 
a quasi elementalist coming onto the field when they're casting radiance and 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 lightning and magnetism spells. They're the three spheres. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then last is the um, is the the neat neat one that Tim helped me work on. Right, Tim? If you're there, because you did a whole bunch of these spells are the para elementalist spells. Now I don't have them, uh, um, but these are all these aren't yours. So uh, oh, that's the spell list. Hold on, let me get the spell descriptions. All right. So here we go. These are ash, um, salt, dust, just mud, you know, all uh, magma, uh, smoke. That's all para. That's all the crap that doesn't really fit in any of the other ones. Uh, so, um, and there's a lot of them here. Uh, there may be one or two alphas in here, but there's some neat spells. And, and for for your for your para elementalist, but uh, you know, and like I said, where I need to fill in, I filled in. So. There you go. Mm -hmm. Answers that question. I love doing that. Now, Alan is doing filling in for our Circle of Eight, Greyhawk Mage spells. So when he created a whole new spell, those new spells for, and this is the irony, when he created the new spells for Jim Ward, uh, for Draw Mage, let me go, and I have a special folder for that, and I'll share these real quick. I'll put these up real quick. Uh, shit. I mean, just, it's under Greyhawk Mage. Um, this was bef well before Jim had passed. So um, I knew that I, that the whole gist of the, the game that you played in, Anna, and that Ed, Ed was going to play in was we're going to look for these spells that, you know, the Drawmage may have. Drawmage new spells. Here we go. Okay. Here they are. And now he has them. And these were the ones that were found, including all the other spells that are in Grouk Adventures, and that's and, and these are created by Alan. Drawmage's gas collector, fourth level. So you can do this to get rid of odors. You can suck up a stinking cloud spell. Really neat ideas, right? Uh, and then you can reverse. Uh, you can reverse it and put the stink somewhere else. You can hold it. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's one. And the second one is Drawmage's heavy step. That's fifth level. And this is a version of light step, but it does not need to be uh, picked when memorized. It can be decided during casting with just one word change. She can, you can, you know, and then there's different versions of this. So, yeah, so those are the two new ones that were found at Gary Khan. And I also refound them Thursday night, if you, any of you watched that. I reran the edit game Thursday night. And I had uh, Coco Money played, and we had the Night of York Adventure, and they, they found uh, them as well. So, I will allow my guys all cr can create spells. Just I gotta I gotta look through them and prove them, make sure they're balanced properly. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's great. I wish I could find more players that were into that because I would love that. Yeah, I mean, but dude, like, look what you've done. You've made you've made so many spells up. That's 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 a lot of work. It was, <laughs> but it's awesome. It's fantastic. It, 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 it's really oh my god! It's almost it's nine o'clock already. Almost holy jeez. Wow, that's crazy. So, um, time flies. <laughs> we're gonna, as Scott, as Jeff said earlier, we're gonna we'll, we'll expand on this a little bit more in a future discussion. We'll go a little more in depth into specifics, right? Uh, some more. We didn't really talk about, um, yeah. So, Cesaurus is offering to to, to play with uh, with your will there. So, uh, always re reach out to him on Discord. Sure. Giant stop. And just, uh, you know, because uh, we'll need some people. What book was that? That book is available on, and one more time, I'll link it um, on. Someone's going to win it tonight along with two. Um, you, you can join the Patreon. This is what I'm going to and... do. Are you all right with this? I'm going to do two giveaways. First one is mm -hmm. the big winner. Gets the PDF and the two books. The second one gets a PDF. Is that fair? Have, yeah, it works for All me. right, you got it. So we're going to have two, because we had a huge, uh, Skygeth and all the other, we had a decent size hype train, so we'll do that, Okay. Yeah, right. so we're going to have you're going to have two winners tonight. But you, should, you guys should sign up for the Patreon. Uh Anna's at both, both Anna's and Wills. Okay, yeah. no, there you go. Okay. If you want to spend extra money, I I won't deter you. You can go to drive through and you can get it. <laughs> yeah, but just get on the Patreon, man. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get then it. You get everything cheaper. that's here. Yeah, it's you, it's a lot cheaper if you go to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you will be getting like two, for example, uh when uh I complete um the uh lost city of the soul zool it will um patreon uh my patreon uh, members will get it oh nice so they'll, they'll get a pdf version of it so 
Um, so it, it, provided you're a paying member, that's that's one of the things. Because after it, that one, there will be completely stripped of IP when it hits. Yeah, I think it has to be, but yes, it won't it be. Does. It won't be. Uh, the plan is that as long as Jeremy gets it to us in time and Bill can paint it up, mm-hmm. we're gonna have the Lost City of, instead of doing a joust this year. I'm gonna have the Lost City of the Soul. On my table for Virtual Grad Con 5. With Will's writing ups <laughs> and a full Lost City of the Soul on the table. And we're going to do there something with that. Yeah. Right now, I just have, I've got to finish the the last level of the dungeon. John, you can win it too. Yeah. What's that? i got okay. to finish the last level of the dungeon and then do up yeah. all the stats. Yeah. So. Fam, I may do the joust too. But here's the thing. <laughs> if I have... Where am I going to put the jousting field if I have that entire thing on my table, right? So that's, <laughs> you know, that's the problem. Uh, I got to figure all that out. So don't say, we're, I'm not going to say we're not going to do the joust, but the plan this year was to have the Lost City of the Soul and do something as a big, you know, because a big thing for Virtual Ground Con 5 this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, because I get them in, I'll kill them all. You know that. I'll kill all those. And and and, and I'm not trying to bad mouth Rich, but, you know, Rich is tough uh, with with other systems, right? So we'll get we'll have some fun people. And it'll be there'll be signups for it. There'll be signups. Awesome special guests, but there'll be signups for it, just like at CarryCon. So, all right. I need a second basement. Yeah, tell that to my wife. Yeah, that. you need a wear dining room table. No, no, yeah. no, no. I get threatened. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. No, my wife would kick my ass. So, and it's Mother's Day. So, yeah. Full of bad ideas, which is cool. All right, so what do we? Uh, I know we don't want to go too too late here, but uh, so uh, wow, what do we want to say in, in closing for this? And by the way, we have over hundred people on night. Thank you so very much. It's awesome. Wow. Nice. But we didn't yeah. see all the fun stuff coming next week. I'm and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. <laughs> he does I think basically the thing that I would take away from this if you're if you're running games uh, is to basically. Uh, tweak your magic however it works best for Perfect. you yep. mm-hmm. and allow and encourage your players to customize yep. their magic and mm-hmm. their wizards because you want to talk about not everybody wants to do it but if you find somebody who is down for it talk about a commitment to the yeah. to the game and to the player you'll have a lot of buy-in from that player yeah sure. and also make magic more than game mechanics it should tie mm-hmm. into the story it should be flavorful and and stuff like that not only the pluses and minus and and die rolls it needs to be part of telling the story and how do you want things like uh, enchantments meaning should you be able to mind control others and stuff like that? Meaning there's a lot of limit, meaning how far do you want to go the rabbit hole and, 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 and stuff on these things, because they, they will tie into the story. Mm-hmm. Meaning if, if you can summon someone and instantly just drag them into a magic yard and, and the stuff or, or kill them outright, then the pow- might and powerful and high and mighty will use that against players and, and characters and others. So, so magic is so cool, but it also needs to be kind of controlled or curated to fit the type of stories and, and, and things that you want to play out at the game table, so to speak. So there might be some a little bit of tweaking. Or you just simply say, well, we just want to go with the vanilla, whatever the edition you have. That that will Because those are battle-tested to at least be kind of generally acceptable for that, that game system. But sometimes it's fun to go deeper into meaning. Do you want more shadow magic, or should illusions be more cool, or, or something in in your game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So or like uh, like the elementalist that Jay have put in, or necromancers and stuff that are barely touched until you get to third edition, where they actually have some rules and cool stuff. Yeah, and and uh, I. I, I we all have our own way of doing things, and that's cool. Yep. There's no right or wrong mm-hmm. way, and I know we get a little, yep, you know, exactly. a little that's... some fun discussions, um, yep. and, and just um, no two DMs are alike, and that's that's just you oh, know, cool. I, I mean, that that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what's Carlos got going on there, uh, Troy? Let me see here. Speaking of Carlos, he was on the uh, Greycast. Oh, he was on Greycast. Very cool. yeah, last week. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. I need to catch up on on good the for, Greycast. Good to hear. Yeah, really good to hear. So. Um, 
maybe go into a little more detail, uh, but you'll get an opportunity to see a Greyhawk mage, hopefully in full force uh, next weekend. We can talk about that in a second. So, um, but um, shout out wise, you'll uh, get to see him run out of all of his spells. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. This, I got I, um, my my thought on this one is it's going to be really easy or really tough. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, actually. yeah. Hey, cool, Sasaurus. He joined the Grail Project. That's awesome. Oh, great. Very cool to see. All right, so uh, shout-out wise, well, what, what else is going on? Oh, Yay. besides besides something else you and I got going on in two weeks. I'll talk about that in a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're always pre-prepared skulls. Uh, so, Derek, you got to be careful. So here's another, one, one quick thing on that. If you say that your guys can do whatever the hell they want in downtime, you're going to get burned because I because uh, I, I had that happen once with Alan and he created 12 scrolls with eight spells on him each of all spells he had, so he didn't have to memorize them. Yeah, so just note, play don't play with fire. Just say, guys, you're too busy doing this. You're too busy doing that. You're too busy working at the guild. You're too busy out doing other stuff. You don't have time to pen scrolls to use all the time, right? So just just note, you got to be careful with that downtime. So, mm -hmm. yes. You just hit him with some burning hands and have him all. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. I learned my lesson. So, so what do you got going on, man? I'm writing as always. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I, like I said, working on getting the uh, the warlocks together. I I haven't decided if I'm going. To, I I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to take this to Kickstarter, the warlocks, and the reason being is. Uh, this being the first installment of all the archetypes, I uh, I want to basically get the ball rolling so that I don't have such long stents of raising the money to go ahead and produce the next one. And then I can start getting them out because I've got the paladins to do. I've got the clerics that are done. So it's like all the ones that I've done so far, I want to start prepping them, getting them ready and getting them out the door into print version so that everybody can have them. And then when they're all done, I'll probably do a collected edition, which would be, we'll see how big it is. I don't know if it'll be practical or not because it might be just too big. It might be like, maybe I'll do warriors and, spellcasters or something do two editions i don't know but i'm going to start doing it so everybody can have physical copies of all these and uh it won't be something that if you if you want you have to just go and come to the patreon to get it can exist on your shelf you can have it and you can do whatever you want with it so that's going on with the warlocks of course i'm still writing the lost city uh really buckled down and committed to to getting that finished um so because i have a timeline in which that i want it to get done when the lost city is done that is 100 percent going to kickstarter nice so that'll be that'll be on kickstarter that's going to probably be when i'm done with it the book will probably be over 200 pages so that'll be pretty big and then i've decided that the next adventure after i write spells, uh, finish yes. up the lost uh the lost cities is going to be I'm going to do cool, give the to Raven's Rook adventure that I should have done and included in the Raven's Rook guidebook. So you'll get a, a, a Raven's Rook adventure finally instead of just all of those um, suggestions that are in there. Probably what I'm going to do because there's all the uh, plot hooks that I have in the Raven's Rook guide, I'll probably put it up for a vote on Patreon which one they want me to turn into the Raven's Rook adventure that I'll do. So, because I had like, I think 20 different adventure hooks that I had in there that were all based off of Raven's Rook. So got that. I've got a, always, I've got other projects. I'm still working on my, um, for lack of a better word, it's, it's sort of like a gamma world role-playing game. And I'm finalizing the wicked studios, role-playing system so we'll see how that works out so that one's been working for a while i don't know when that'll get completed because it's not even ready to play test so that's way further down the road so it takes and, years yep. yeah and then that's just that and i've always got other stuff plopping up and mm -hmm. I, you should see my to-do list it's huge oh I've, I've, i'm there with you Jared, I, yeah, I, I know yeah. 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 it's just it's too much 
I've got my uh, I'm going to write up a um, so like when I went to Gary Con and I ran Marvel superheroes. Right. What I did is I published up a rules booklet of the original uh, TSR Marvel superheroes rules and I gave it out to the to one lucky player at each time that I ran that ran the game i gave one out i did that here in denver at genghis con too i gave one out so basically i'm going to run an original marvel superhero adventure that i'm going to write up and publish and then i'll just give that away next at the next gary con when i run marvel there so i'm going to run marvel i end up going to run some greyhawk when i'm mm-hmm. i've decided that i'm going to yeah. run more cool. at gary con this year than awesome. i did last year so what's going on anna Oh yeah, it's like well, it, it's a ton of uh, first. And the GIA, uh, GIS uh, conversion project goes really, really well. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, well done into borders, and not only it progressing well, it looks even better than I thought. So the 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 map result, this is a huge boon in in the looks of it. And also, after I've put all the data entry, my next plan for the GIS project was to to do vector. Uh, outlined for all the coastlines, all the lakes and all of that. Thankfully, I have one of my patrons who used to work in the field. He is doing all that work for me, so sure. so or for us, so to speak. So so the, the next step of the GIS project is being worked on in parallel, which is amazing. So so that is going really, really well. I thought it was going to take two years and it will take significantly shorter than that to to get it off the the shelf, so to speak. So in a couple of in a month or so I will have the first kind of preview uh, that people can download both the, uh, 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 as a form of JPEG and stuff, and also people can download the uh, the GIS files and look at them on their own computer because that's c- kind of the one of the major uh, things with this is that you should be able to tweak the map the way you want to in on your end, so to speak. So that is working a lot. I'm also started to um, uh, to create and um, to redo my website because it's uh, highly overdue. There's some tools and stuff that I use that don't work well. And <clears throat> so that needs to be done. So I'm I'm now trying to figure out how I can best build a new website while the other one is up and running. That's the, the thing. They have a feature for it in my, uh, for my web server. So, so hopefully I can make that work. So, so that's another project I'm doing. And then we have, um, uh, I'm working on a big commission that I'm hopefully can wrap up in about a month or so. So that takes about half time now when it comes to, and, and then, yeah, those are the, the big ones, but they're also um, <clears throat> some small ones. There's new heraldry. I figured out when, when I was doing it last Friday, thank you services, uh, asked some questions about orc tribes and stuff. And I realized that, Oh, there's uh, some heraldry for some orc humanoid tribes that I didn't. And I found a couple of them in Pomarsh in Joe Block's awesome article. There was one tribe that I've forgotten about. So that one, so there will be some new heraldry for, for more of the, and I have some that I've invented for my campaign. So I'll add them in there too. So there will be a, a a batch of humanoid heraldry coming as well, and then there will be a, a mapping stream on Friday as well. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. As long as my procedure goes fine and I'm capable, Wednesday night, City of Harby tour, seven o'clock. Okay? Oh, good, good, right, good. That's right, a good one. Right. Yeah. So that that's it. We'll have a game Thursday, then two streams Saturday. The number 300 Gavin, 9 a.m. Saturday morning. It has to be nine. It's the only time it works. Nine to eleven. Rob Kuntz, uh, Anna, myself, Alan, and Rob Kuntz on. It'll be the fourth time Rob's on, Saturday yep. morning, 9 a.m. That night, after I get back from my mom's birthday party, the Red Wedding. Yeah, that's what I was calling it. So, uh, Slav Squad Squad Trudic Minimum Wedding Event. It's going to be awesome. We get to see uh, Ravalanta in action and with all these other great individuals, Eric Moen included. All right. The week after that, Will and I get to play in a game GM'd by Bones, uh, Spaces Between the Arcades, the name of the title, and uh, there's going to be uh, Darling Myriad, myself, and Will playing in that game. That's at noon on Saturday, May 25th. Finish up the month. And Ed should be back on the 26th for a Gavin. All right? He just hasn't verified it 100% yet. Well, it's going to, your money, you're gonna, I'm going to take your money for that uh, fourth quarter. All right. Uh, my, my deadline to get everything done is Labor Day, and we're on pace. We're on pace, okay, for uh, for stuff. We're, we'll be good. We'll be good. 
All right, here we go. Giveaways. Then sit tight and let's go with a massive rating to the little bird who played yesterday, who's going to raid into Darling because she's done like in five minutes. So we want to catch her by the end. Here we go. The big winner tonight is Stefan Strategy. You get to win the PDF and two of the uh, oh, cool. giveaways uh, from, from Will. And then the, the, the PDF winner is Vamp Wickman, Chad Johannes. Grats. Awesome. Yeah, you did, Stefan. You won. You got it. Please Yay. sit tight, everyone. Uh, let's set that raid up in, uh, say hi to Bird. I know she's a video game streamer, but she plays in my game whenever I ask her, her and Coco and the whole crew, and they're awesome. So, uh, sit tight, and then they're going to rate, she's going to rate in a darling who's painting. So, uh, continue the evening, uh, Will. Anna, thanks a lot for everything. This was fun. Oh, thank this you. Really, this really, was really, fun. Really, yep. really a great you. discussion. Well, uh, mm -hmm. I hit the wrong button. Uh, Jay hit the wrong button. Duh. Yes. Wrong button all the way. Stefan, if you trust me, I'll pick two. If, do you have Raven's Rook is the question I'm having. If you not, if you don't, you want to get that one, definitely. All right, setting the raid up. I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss the crossover here. Barley's already she's already got 144 people on, by the way. Wow. So, wow. yeah, because she's been streaming for 24 hours. Oh, poor thing. She, she does it on purpose. I know. It's so we're going in with another 102. Three, wow. awesome, five. Four, three, two, one. See you Wednesday. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Yeah, she's young. She can do stuff like that. I was gonna yeah. say I can't do that. Me neither. Anymore. I hate how it switches to commercials. Yeah. Well, you have to subscribe to that. Yeah. At least like you have to pay.